So let's get on to this week's Coronation Street. And we have got six, seven stories. It was a bit of a funny one this week. We're going to start off with the, with the wedding story and then the Stephen story, the two biggest ones. And then we're going to... We're going to sort of do a bit of a mixture because Monday's episode had lots of stories kind of combining and it had the teens and it had with, with, with Mason and it had Eliza and Stu with a bit of getting hit by the car and it had the Cassie stuff because it was Tyrone's car. So we're going to talk about what happened on Monday there first and then when the stories kind of go off in different directions we'll, we'll add those separately and then we'll finish off with the with the with the Ardy story. Storyline titles, Gemma. I'm not particularly pleased with this one, but Billy cuts the cloth. I don't get it. Well he's he's a man of the cloth, right? Yeah, I know. And that. he is cutting that out of his life. What's well, cutting the cloth? It's is a like phrase, farting? isn't it? No, no, that's what cutting does that the cloth. Um you cut your cloth accord I can't remember, it was a phrase. I looked it up, it is a phrase. I thought you might know as a as a literary type. Mm. You cut you cut Okay, well maybe that's not the best one. Um hair today, gone tomorrow. That's the Stephen that storyline. Like? Do you get that? No. Ha- the ha- No, these are really obscure what does this that week. Mean? Carla's got her hair back. Oh no. Stephen will be gone tomorrow. No, except he's booked his. No. No, that's not brilliant either, is it? Right. So then we got the mix. Okay, the <laughs> teen storyline. Vape alarm. Vape Sounds alarm? like rape alarm. No, Michael. <laughs> and then we got Papa Tom and Cassie come home and the other advance payment. I can't help it. They're not the best ones vape this week. It alarm. doesn't matter. Okay, all right, all well, right. That's the, probably okay. the best of the three, but I'm, I'm not, right. not convinced with any of those. You're going right. to do Billy Cuts the Cloth. I am going to be doing Billy Cuts the Cloth. Have, have Billy Ever After, we called it last week. This was fascinating, this story. This was a really great story. This, it's like, kind of went in directions first. that I had no idea it was going to, well, but I'm really, really this, glad that it did. Um, but the we wedding made was Monday. requests for this. We did. We said our requests were, let them get married, let nothing horrible happen, let there be some kind of blessing or whatever in the church afterwards. They delivered with that. Yeah, but we but... also said we wanted some kind of acknowledgement or, you know, discussion of... Of his beliefs and how they fit mm. into the the um, Anglican Church. Yeah, and, yeah. I mean, and really, they really, really got delivered that. completely. Delivered I was so this. impressed with that on Wednesday. Honestly, let's, let's get to there when we get to that. Doesn't it show that they can? They did. They did it. Um, I, good, I, I really good job. good job. Right. So Monday, then they're all getting ready for their wedding. Um, number five, you got Gemma. She's grooming the groom because he's, you know he's giving him a bit of a shave. Old Paul and. Um, Paul's like, oh, I hope that Billy's going to like my surprise. I don't know what is, what's planned. For, is this wedding night surprise, maybe? No, it's the church wedding. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. So Billy, meanwhile, is all suited up. And um, he hears, well, nearly hears, Summer and Dee Dee having a bit of whispers about this plan that's going to be going on as well. And they managed to put him off the scent. So quite pleasantly early the wedding takes place like third scene of the episode they're yeah. in the bistro already you can go home early this is the sort of wedding you want to go to because you can leave i mean they've even the got evening. the late night license there so they really had no yeah. need to start no, it quite so wanna... early in the in the day but i suppose you they did have to two get ceremonies over to get and done with at lunchtime so you can leave when you want to mm. anyway so they're at the bistro you got uh, you got acoustic YMCA being I crooned. This. I'm sorry. Want, want such the a fan music, of it? I hated every single choice, and I, I know some people loved it. I'm a good. I'm really glad that some people really liked it. I just hated every minute of all of the music. It, rem- it was very talented. It was. It, oh, she sang it well. Amazing performance. Great arrangement. Well done. I just thought it was. Yeah. Just. Okay. It reminded. It wasn't for me. It reminded me, <laughs> but not in a good way, of when Karen and Steve got married and yeah. they had Wonderwall being played by a string quartet. And and I think Paul even makes a comment that it was supposed to be some kind of in joke between him and Billy about. I mean, was it the fact that is it YMCA? He's a vicar. Christian I'm not even going to get into it. I, I'm I not don't, sure. I didn't. Or was it just the case of well, like they said, had a, like at the at the stag do they had rainbows everywhere because no, this is no, a gay no. stag do. Him, he, him, that's a YMCA because it's a no, gay Billy, wedding. Paul literally said that Billy and he, or is it just Billy, hates hates slowed down versions of dance songs, and it was like a joke. But like, it's not the time. <laughs> it's not the time to do for a funny joke. Let's do something that we really hate. That's, that's a joke. Just for the irony, it's not a hipster wedding. 
Mm. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't too far. I, I liked it for the NASA at the wedding, but that wasn't for me. And like you I said, really, I'm glad it, that there were some viewers that enjoyed that. Into my own brain. <laughs> um, so um, summer walks. Billy down the aisle. Paul comes in soon after. I just want to say the strength of the song YMCA is not in the lyrics or the melody. Is it? It's the upbeat tempo and the yeah. sort of dance. Yeah. The kind of dance element. And the actions. And the course. actions and the and the costumes. Yeah. I wouldn't say the strength was in the <laughs> um, so Paul arrives he's got Gemma on one arm Bernie on the other arm and they help him help him down the aisle and I, I was I loved watching Billy's reaction to it because like Aww. he's like he's got it was proper sad when he first sees him and how much he's struggling um, but once Paul reaches him and um, and he's there and they're both together and he cheers right up and it's lovely it was really really nice and Paul's got a stool there to sit on and um, they do the vowel reading um Paul, <laughs> I it was I found it interesting seeing who was invited to the wedding. Not a huge turnout, to be fair. And I think as Coronation Street's first proper gay wedding ceremony that actually goes through, they possibly they could have, have pushed the boat out more. There. But never mind. But, but yeah, one of the one of the guests difficult. that was there was David, and I was uh, I appreciated that because the first time that Paul came into the program, he was David's cellmate, wasn't he? Yeah. And ever since Paul's been back on the show, they've made occasional fleeting references to the fact that these two were banged up together. Um, but it was nice that David was there, and <laughs> he he made he had a few good lines. He was talking about um, was it Lily feeling sick and. Shona had to draw the short straw to look after her and he just found this hilarious that, that Shona was looking after this child well, that's not actually technically her child. And He then, said something like she is on her bucket list to go to see a gay wedding. Oh, did I miss that? Which I thought was great because same. <laughs> uh, a likelihood of that ever happening incredibly slim considering that none of my friends ever get married. Also, I don't know. Well, they're, they're not gay either. I'm not very close with any we people. We don't have many friends. I don't, I don't imagine that anybody, <laughs> I, yeah, would invite me. No, but the, the, the line but that... I'm a really good guest. I am really... I'll bring you a present. Gemma, well, you, Gemma is very, very good And I'd really love it. So and I'd say complimentary no things. And I wouldn't be like, I hated your acoustic cover of YMC. She'd be on her best behaviour. I'd put it on Twitter though. Anyone's got any gay weddings that they'd like to invite Gemma <laughs> along to? Me and Shona can go together. We, I would love to go to a gay wedding <laughs> So anyway, the reason that I brought this up was sorry, because sorry. part of Billy's vows was that he was talking about his regrets about letting other people come in between them. And I wouldn't it be lovely if we'd have been a couple for, for longer and hadn't oh. had that period off. And, and this is when David kind of turns to Todd and is like, I think he's talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that all the way through, David just had this, you know, this David, David just face. found the whole thing kind of amusing. I yeah, think. I'm not sure that was the vibe that we were going for, but that's David <laughs> for you, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so it's a kind of it's kind of solemn vows, not just that they're serious, but they're also a bit of a downer. And then Paul comes up and once more, yeah, weekly praising to the hilt of Paul uh, of for Peter Ash's work on this. Absolutely fantastic. He's, fan- he's, he's fantastic. so so good. Isn't I'm it? so. I, I. It's such a mixed feeling because. We we found him in the losing of him. Yeah, no, and it's, I agree. It's sad because he's been on the show for you know a good a, a few good, years now, and it's only now really that we like. Honestly, oh, I think just he's fantastic. Great. But that just proves what I've been saying for a long time about how every almost every single actor on the show is mm. capable of really incredible work. You've they just, really are talented. Corey's just got to make us care about them. Yeah. And I think that and sometimes we don't get that. To, we have things happen to them and we have them have stories, but... When Corey really puts the effort in, it, al- it almost always pays off. Sometimes yeah, I just, like, okay, just going to say elephant in the room, I don't care about Stu at all. <laughs> I don't care about Eliza. You can try as hard as you like, it just doesn't stick. I but, really want to care about Eliza. But... You know, Paul, hit what a turnaround. Yeah. It's a bit, well, it's like when they had, um, they suddenly made everybody care about Seb within the two weeks before yeah. he died. And Nina and, and Seb. And then everyone's like, oh, Seb, we love Seb so much. It's like, no, you, you didn't even you didn't know even who know. Seb was last year. He barely remembered what his year. name he was. He didn't have anything to do. And, and this year, everyone's saying, oh, Ryan, he's brilliant. I love he's the best actor on the show. But we it's literally just that... did his character profile, like, just before the after yeah, the taxi line and said, they who not is made Ryan? Us care about him. Him. Although actually we, we 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 did have lots of good things to say about Ryan's character about profile, him. we knew all along. But 
Um, well, this is yeah, what I'm saying. Coronation Street can really, really make us care about characters if they want to. This is a very unfortunate is... argument and endorsement for the argument of the, the cast is stupid. Usually just before they die. Here's a test, Gemma, about whether right. Tim is going to be bumped <laughs> off next week. Do I care? Do you love him? Do you care about him? Is he no. your favourite? No. <laughs> well, I think, sadly, Kill him. he may live Drown to... Him. to, to Annoy you another day. Drown him like a bag of kittens. <laughs> um, anyway, anyway, so Paul's get, getting up to do his vows. And his are a bit cheerier. And he's the one that's dying here. His, I, I felt that his are a little bit more natural sounding and Billy's are a bit stilted. Well, Billy which, was Considering performing. that he is a professional public speaker. Well. And, and Paul, you know, isn't. Not. Not so much. He's a builder. Um, he did a really, really good job. And he's saying... Oh, however much time I've got left, I'm so glad I'm spending it with you. It's all it's kind of cliche breaking. stuff, but actually really, really lovely and perfectly suited to this mm. particular scene and everything. And there's smiles, there's tears, they're pronounced husband and husband and everybody cheers and it's lovely. Very, very nicely done. Shame they didn't get Blue Merrick to play. Um, I can't remember what her character's called that she plays now. Jenny? Registrar. Jenny something registrar. That would have made, that would have been the cherry I on know. the top. I know. Anyway, um, they're maybe, all, they're... maybe maybe that character is a bigot. Maybe she is. We don't know. Maybe she is. So the festivities <laughs> commence. Everyone's saying how lovely it was. Paul's saying, oh, I'm really sorry that I couldn't have got it done in church. And Billy's like, oh, well, God's in here. And he kind of taps himself in his, on his chest, on his heart. Not, not in any building. Oh, really, Billy? That doesn't pay the bills, does He's it? He's everywhere, Billy. That's kind of your thing. He's probably in the bistro, too. Do you think he is? Do you think he's in the bistro? Yes. Watching well, Billy... all the sex in the in the freezer and all the fi- thievery going on. He sees all Michelle. Going, this is terrible. <laughs> I he's wish writing I was... it on your list. He's Michelle. like, I wish I was back at the at the church. So anyway, so obviously Mind you, this... there's a lot of bad stuff happens in that church as well. I'm not safe anywhere. <laughs> Poor God. <laughs> Um, so, um, yeah, Paul's kind of saying this, and, and I think by this point, we'd all kind of twigged that Paul's secret plan was going to be something to do with a church. And get, I thought he was going to get, what did you think was going to, I thought he was going to get somebody like, hello, I am a cheerful man of God, and I've come to bless you. Yeah, I didn't know whether it was going to be in church, but it was clearly going to be something along there. Yeah. So, so they're kind of giving each other winky faces. Bloody Chesney comes out. Chesney comes along and says, oh, God, I'm going to do something. You cut Why the cake, are you doing everybody. Just go away. Yeah, he gets his line, doesn't he? Yeah, you he? want your cake, do you? But he has also a very important role in that he's sneaking Paul the keys to the church. And I can't remember why Chesney had the keys to the church. Why does he, he need the do, keys? Look, there was a vicar there. Was the vicar standing outside going, bloody hell, they turn up. This is so embarrassing. I don't know. I, I don't, don't normally work on a Monday. But but no, it wasn't the vicar from that church, I was know, it? exactly. It was so, from he's wait, so he's waiting outside. Yeah. Going, this is weird. I, I, anyway, the last time I was hanging around matter. outside a church, I got arrested. <laughs> doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> so Paul um, does his whole thing of like, me and my husband. Ah, <laughs> woo, did but we you do did, that? You did that. You said me. Did I? You said That's me, really, really you? cheesy. Yeah. I don't think well, I would have done that we in need, my, we in need my to watch groom video. speech. Well, I, did I did a really good groom speech. Did you? Yeah, it was great. I think it was a And bit I did cheesy. it from memory. I was cringy. I didn't need no chart cards. Well, I, I didn't don't do think one. I said it's my bride's prerogative. I think I did a very good group As speech. I recall, it all the speeches were about you. Yes, I know you do like to bring that up. Yeah. Anyway, it's always, it is a bit of a cliche to say, my husband, my wife. <laughs> anyway, it starts getting a little bit soppy. Um, so Paul says, right, time to cut the cake. Are you allowed Let's to get, get soppy on, at your wedding? You are, you are. God. But you got you, you know you got. Well, we got to so remember we're British. You want some cake, haven't you? Don't tear stains. We're all British. We can't be too sentimental here. No. So Paul <laughs> later on goes outside with Billy and says, I've "Got a surprise for you, mate. I mean, husband, husband. <laughs> I found a vicar <laughs> who's agreed to marry us on the sly in the church." Your church, hooray! And uh, Billy's like, um, that's, that's this lovely, be... but that's that, uh, yeah. Could Poor be shadowing. Could be a little bit of trouble if it's caused if we're found out. And Paul's like, no, it's going to no be one... fine. In out, bosh. No one's going to know. I, I, and I didn't think that they would get found out. No, I, I was uh, agreeing. And, and with Billy, Paul. yeah, Billy was like, oh, you could see Khan getting really excited and was like, this is exactly what I want, but I can't. And he's like, oh yeah, let's go for it. And then um, the minibus pulls up, the St Mary's minibus with Todd driving it, I think, and they tootle on down to the church for their secret service. Oh, not 
like James Bond. Oh. You know. Um, Billy's, uh, Billy's um, at the front. Uh, uh, no. Yeah, Billy, Billy gets, gets walked down the aisle by Summer. So they both get I, a turn, which I thought was cute. Yeah. I, I just love the look on Billy's face I because know. this is just what he... This is what he's wanted all his life. And I he know. didn't think that he'd be able to get. And <sighs> I, I was in kind of two minds about... You know, we said when Billy was looking up... Um, will the Church of England let us get married? I was really hoping that they wouldn't just say, oh yeah, go on then, because it's you, we'll sneak you in. But I think they just about got it right. Whereas yeah. I thought it was lovely. Um, it was but lovely they acknowledged it that it wasn't It know, didn't, the thing kosher. is, okay, one thing I just want to say is, I, under, I understand, and I, you know, I, again, it's not my place to have, you know, to, to say one thing or the other, but these are two belief systems that are not compatible. Mm. And it's it's unfortunate, but the, the, ru- the rules are, have always been the same. Yeah, we, I want to come back wanna, to that later. I don't want to... Yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm not saying it's right or... You, know, you probably can imagine what my views are on this. But um, there are people who have very particular ideas about this. Um, and I think this was... It, it was as respectful as it could possibly have been I think because so. um you can't just rewrite i think it's disrespectful to everybody to pretend like you said to have them say oh no we don't mind just do it once mm. because think of all these people who are in the same position as as billy and, and paul and couldn't actually have this happen that's not fair on them to kind of pretend that this is okay Mm. Coronation Street has to acknowledge the reality of the situation. Yeah, and and I've seen lots of people commenting online, being very critical of the Church of England, and that's you know absolutely. There's not a lot of representation are... about the Church of England's b- basic, b- position on this. The, the... I don't think the sort of people who are, you know, in line with this, generally go on Twitter. Uh, or that, uh, that I would ever see their comments. The, the thing you see is, what I'm it, saying? this is this is an institute. The Church of England <laughs> is what six hundred years old, five hundred years old or so since old um, Henry VIII started up, it, 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 and some of their practices they don't just change overnight. The the I, not... the whole idea mm. of gay people being married has it's only been legal what in this country ten That's years or so. That's a very good point. And 20 years ago, when we had Roy and Haley getting married on Coronation Street, <laughs> 25 years yeah, ago, they couldn't because... it was so out of the question yes. in, in you know, British... Um, obviously, obviously, there were lots of people who were in favour of gay marriage. I'm not going to say that. But they, they made it a thing that Les Battersby reported yeah. Roy and Haley getting married... The you know the, there was press, it to the press, paper and yeah. the papers turned and up. It, it was a scandal because it was a story. So in in and and you pa- know in it wasn't that long ago and it still kind of goes on now where you have actors and and you know famous people who are oh, you gay admit you're gay you're gay you know yeah and, it has really still... changed very quickly in the public consciousness <sighs> and for an institution like the Church of England it can't just. Click I'm not making fingers excuses for anybody being a bigot. No, but, no, no, of course not. But, but these things do take time. We have said ch- before on the show, I mean, you know, it's the same things happen to loads of minority groups. And, and things like are... Like being a woman. Yeah. Like, when I was a kid, it was always the first woman to do this, that and the other thing. I mean, when, the fir- it's only been, you know, almost 30 years, 28, 29 years since the episode, since Vicar of Dibley came on, where it was, what, there's a female there's a lady vicar, woman. lady vicar, so that's barely any time at all. It um, really and, has, and the it's, thing- it's testament really to people's love and acceptance that as a society, we have moved so fast. Yes. And I know that it's not fast enough. I know that. I really know that. And and I also recognise some people on Facebook group were talking happened. about it that um, like some American Canadian branches of the Church of England do accept gay marriage. So it's not like, well, if they managed it, then why don't we? But patience is... People... Look, it's not up to us to tell people to be patient, though. No, 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 I know. But it seems like things with the Church of England are moving. In well, fact, this is a very... Article, th- yeah. th- this is this is a, a something that is happening this year. It's just what... awful. I mean, honestly, what we I... understand how awful this is to even Gay, gay vicars are accepted. Yeah. Um, or, you know, they've got to I be... I know, but um, you know what I mean. They're, they're not celibate. allowed to... Celibate, that's the word I'm looking uh, but at. It's... But the, what's going on this year... And I was really surprised. I... I 
apparent I, I was because I was saying what I really want for this story yeah. is for Billy and Paul to have a blessing in the church one, yeah. an official blessing in the church because yeah. that's all right isn't it no you can't have an official gay blessing in the Church of England ceremony at the moment that's that really really, really surprised me but it is happening and earlier well, this well hang on they're going to have a vote it's no not... they, they've had a vote oh. they had a vote back in February oh. the Church of England where it was decided and I don't even I can't remember how close it was but it wasn't like you know really super close where it decided yes the Church of England will accept or will start conducting officially wedding uh, blessings for same sex couples great um, the idea, because uh, I was looking at these articles the other day, it was that, you know, maybe within a few months from February that it would get started. That hasn't happened quite no, so quickly. They were trying to work out the gear, wording right? of the of the Ooh. blessing. And again, it's, it's this institution that goes back hundreds and hundreds of years and there's lots of, you know, it's Listen, obviously very controversial. Is... <laughs> but in July, it was decided yeah. that there was going to be another vote on the wording in oh, November. Oh, my goodness. Okay. But it is something that is happening right now, and it could well be that in six months' time, that blessings can take place Good. in Church of it's England too late churches. For Paul, though, probably. And you know, who knows? It may be within years that it'll be weddings as well. So it is, it is happening. <laughs> yeah, and, I mean, and it's it... not, it's not any particular churches. Um, individual church's fault that's that's the rules for the they institution can't, they, really they can't just say really oh yeah I mean we've on. seen what happens in the storyline yeah a, a vicar can't just suddenly decide to do it so it's every church of England church is not allowed to conduct same sex ceremonies at the moment um, whatever the well, views of the vicar or the congregation or anything it's just not on and, um, <sighs> and most Christian churches in this country right. are church of England aren't they? Yep. We've got some Catholic churches, yep. but mostly Church of England. Now, there are other churches, for example, if we look back again at the Roy and Haley story in 99, 98, 99, I think, when they first got married, they were going to get married in a church, if you remember Jessica Lundy, the vicar there, but that was in a Unitarian church, which yeah, is the, the Duckinfield Unita Unitarian, Unitarian church, and that's not Church of England, so that's still a Christian church, but they've got some Different, different ideas. ideas about you know I think they say that Jesus wasn't God's son or wasn't equal to God or whatever and and because they're not part of the Church of England but still a Christian church they can make their own rules and and gay marriages are allowed in there yeah um, but so I don't know you whether know. it would have been spitting for Billy and Paul to have got married in a church like <clears throat> that because no, I, don't I don't think. Know. Billy, as an Anglican vicar, yeah. would have felt right getting married in a church where one of it's the main his, things is yeah. Jesus isn't isn't divine, and so so I th I think it was it was really lovely how they managed to sneak him into St Mary's. The the, the fallout was great, um, yeah, I mean, and it's, it's just a, it's just a shame, I suppose. In a, for the story, that this is an issue that's very much in flux at the moment. Nobody in the story has been able to say, oh, well, you know, they had a vote earlier this year because no. they weren't to know where the law would be yeah. at the time of broadcast. Um, but, you know, yeah. where, where where we had, and maybe maybe we will, where we had Roy and Haley officially get married in 2010 um, because the law had changed to allow transgender uh, people to get married, um, maybe... If the law changes quick enough and the Church of England Well, they're not accepts... going to change fast enough to make a wedding. No, no, not a wedding, but it could well be. A redemption. And it's going to be close that they, that Paul and Billy have an official Church of England blessing. Mm, maybe, maybe, because this rule was voted on in February, Coronation it's... Street was banking on the fact yeah. that you know, by the end of this year or whatever, they'd be able to have a proper blessing. And now it's been delayed a little bit, so they may be like, oh, what do we do now? Paul, you're going to have to live a little bit longer. I, I don't know. So that there, there, there is, um, yeah, the, the Church of England is changing. Um, and, um, yeah. Listen, it's, the thing is about it... I, I've, I've just found this really interesting to learn about It is about really this interesting. Um, it's not down to us to tell anybody what they should believe. Billy's become a vicar of his own free choice. Nobody made him be a Church of England vicar or, you know, archdeacon. He's the one who's decided to, uh, you know, hang his hat on this particular system of beliefs. So it's, you know, but at the same time, it is important to acknowledge the fact that this is the state religion. Mm. 
you know, the King of England is the head of the Church of England. There is a very strange combination of, of church and state in this country that we don't really acknowledge very much because it doesn't affect us day to day, but it does affect people like Billy and Paul. Yeah. And I can't um, remember what I can see both I can see both sides of it, but I, I do feel more sympathy for Billy and Paul. You you said about, you know, Billy's decided to hang his hat on this particular region. I can't remember what the backstory for Billy's supposed to be and like whether he was I know that he was a right right, right wild raver in the past and also um getaway driver extraordinaire. Yeah, he was. Uh, but I can't remember whether he grew up Christian before he realized he was gay or whether and, and then had a bit of a wild period or whether I do think you have I, I can't remember ha- how I it do worked. think you do have control over your beliefs. Well, quite often it to is just to do with the culture. Yeah, I know, but I, I do. I do. I'm not going to give anybody a pass on having belief a belief system that is problematic because once you start saying, "Oh, it's okay," you know, where does that end? Because there are lots of belief systems that are incredibly inherently racist, homophobic, bigoted. You, you want, but lots you know. of religions are also a spectrum as well and yeah, you know, can be a liberal christian but you he's can be a, very a representative christian. of the church yeah yeah that's true that's true he's I not just he's a got... parishioner who wanders up and goes you know i'm sorry i don't have any control over this but I, i'm with you <laughs> like like his gang that he had later on in the week i mean this is a very contentious issue i'm sure that we have listeners who have a spectrum of beliefs like you like you mentioned there are different people in different countries who have different um religions uh, you know different types of christianity mm. and um the last thing i want to do is up- upset or offend anybody but i think that this co- this story has done a really good job of w- doing a very delicate balance between i think i, I don't think <laughs> that the um i don't think you should get married gay married in a church belief system has been represented particularly well but i'm not too bothered about that i'm afraid because i think that like you said they've had about 600 years of of being represented particularly quite Mm. quite well i don't think we need to know too much more about that i think we already know yeah i mean from that point of view and we we, we'll get on with to go with describing the storyline in a minute but i suppose it's been the bishop who's been the representative of that and even he has been yeah, he I is sympathetic, I think, to, yeah, to Billy's situation. I honestly thought he was being a bit... I found him quite annoying because... But he was doing the same thing as Billy, though. Like, oh, it's not my fault. I, I don't really believe this, but I have to say that this is the yeah. rule. It's like, oh, it does feel a bit... starts to feel indefensible. <laughs> when you're sitting opposite from somebody going, I know your husband's dying and... You know, and, and you truly, we all believe in God and Jesus said, love one another. But, but again, it's still the church rules. It's the rules. Mm. I, I, you know, what? you know, we're very lawful, aren't we? Yes, yeah, we're so very lawful. We're very sticklers for rules. So my, my natural inclination to follow rules is, is hitting up against my, I do I have know, a very, decency I, and I am uh, not a, I sympathy am not and being a, um, nice to people and understanding that it's, I'm not, not an fair. agent of chaos or no. um, what's it called? An- I'm not an anarchist. I Sometimes I am an anarchist. Break that to you here, but not in church. <laughs> I think there's a time and a place. Look, I've said we've I've said church about is a million. Not a place for anarchy. No, there's no anarchy to be had in church. I totally. Although Jesus upending the uh, the stalls there. He did. He didn't like that, yeah. did he? Although that wasn't uh, in the church. Like I said, this is a really great story because it generates so much conversation. Yeah, yeah, it has. I mean, this is. The, and one I of think the, it was sympathetic to almost everybody. They they did a really good job with it. Uh, I was just watching Wednesdays, going, "Oh, this is going to be good to talk about on the, the podcast." The only people that didn't come off well were the anti gay marriage people. Yeah, I which think, I think is fair enough. Yeah, I think that there was. Anyway, let's move on. Let's move on. I think we've we've exhausted that, but I hope that's helped. I mean, I don't things, know. People, maybe to people. Maybe what that, do you mean? Explained it? No, no, no. Everyone's I think got their own opinion. Ev- no, everyone's got their own opinion. I, but don't I think did see some listening. people going. You know, why? Why isn't it allowed? Why can't they just? Change oh, I did. It? I did see people saying. Why can't that saying, church yeah. allow it, but not that church? It's just one and of I those things. It's kind it's of just, explained it a little it's bit. It's just more. like you, you know. The, I mean, I don't understand the bishop. Literally explained it in a very simple way. It is just the rules, and and it's not just. It's not. I know if you don't believe in, if you don't believe in these religions, you are gonna have come 
along the the lines of it's all just made up silly nonsense okay we'll put that to one side unfortunately it's also legal there are legal things involved because this is the state religion and there are we've spoken about this before and i think this is incredibly unfair but there are only a few religious ceremonies in this country that are legally binding as religious oh yeah there's barely marriage. anything barely so, anything like if you're if, if you're, you're muslim, muslim you cannot get married legally in a religious ceremony which i think is horrible and disgusting yes and, and I, we, wrong. we talked about that when zidane and you rana have to got go married and, didn't you we, have and to have your religious ceremony. ceremony and then you have to go and register it as a legal marriage because yeah. uh, and therefore because it is uh, an exception to the rule, you know, the, the fact that these very few religious ceremonies are allowed as legally binding marriage ceremonies, they're also legal entities and there are rules and mm. you can't you can't just change and bend the rules. It did make me wonder, like... I know it's not fair. It's, it's not interesting horrible. how much they've had this discussion and been openly critical of the Church of England, but when when Kate and Rana were wanting to get married, they very much pussyfooted around the issue of why um, Rana's family wouldn't be happy with it. We had yes. Sarah, and uh, was Hassan dead by that point? I think I can't remember, saying, oh, the family's not going to be very happy with this, when what they were really saying is, you cannot have a lesbian They kept saying the community will a, not like in this. In a mosque. The community will not like this. Yeah. Um, so, in a way, I'm kind of thinking, oh, why do, Why is it the Church of England, it's fine to lambast like this? But on the other hand, I'm saying, I'm thinking, well, it's good that it it has, they're not, they're not, yeah, they're not pussyfooting around it and they're making a very interesting storyline development. Yeah, they're, they're definitely more critical of Christianity than any other religion, which, you know, makes sense because it's the, the sort of, it feels like it can take the punches well, yes, and we... Um, and I also just want to point out, too, um, it is England and Wales that we're talking about because Scotland has a different... There are different legal systems. This this group of countries that we call our home... I've not even looked. Not what can all you do in Scotland? the same. I don't, I'm not going to say because I, I don't want to get it wrong. <laughs> but, you know, the Church of England is the Church of England. And Wales. And, and Northern well. Ireland, maybe. <laughs> I don't well. know. I'm not going to say that, but there are different rules okay. also in in these countries that we we all love. Anyway, anyway, mm. you're still with us. Let's go back. Are to you the, guys the there? Access. Hello. We've got fast <laughs> forward. Have you just got disgusted visit. with us? You are either bored or disgusted. Yeah. But sorry. come back. We're about to remind you what happened next. Ugh. So they're at the church. Um, they're doing their they're doing their wedding their secret so wedding guy, ceremony was, to get the vows again. It was interesting to me that we this guy the the one who did the, the ceremony was just a relatively anonymous. Yeah, he was he was obviously someone that was just sympathetic. It's he's, a shame, he's ordained. He's yeah. It's a shame that there was no room in the story. I mean, it wouldn't have. There was no time. There's, the Coronation Street's got too many characters, too many stories. It would have been really nice if we had known this guy. If it had been Billy's confidant, you know, his colleague who had married him. But maybe we can just imagine that. He's, he, he seems to have got away with it, doesn't he? This oh. guy's got, got off scot-free for this. He's going, this is brilliant. I'm going to be a renegade vicar. I'm going to marry everybody. Yeah. Anyone. Billy's the one that's taken all the flack. Billy's the one that's had to go on the radio. This guy's Billy's not the one that people have been horrible about. Yeah, as far as we know. The, yeah, the renegade vicar. Yeah, yeah. he got he's got free. He's probably not even a Christian. Uh, anyway, anyway. <laughs> so um, Billy, Billy, um, this was has, sweet. Does his other speeches. I will say that this fa- I found this more emotional. Well, Billy gets Billy and Paul get a bit sad mm-hmm. when they do the death to us part because again, yeah. being a a Christian ceremony, you get the traditional vows here. They didn't make up their own say. vows for this bit. No, and it was really sweetly done. I also, I think I quite like the point of view shots, because they had those in there. It was a bit like an episode of Peep yes, Show. Yes, it did. It was, it was like Jess <laughs> How are we going to get out of this one, Jess? <laughs> Just go through with it. We'll get divorced later. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I thought it was really, really nicely done. I, I, I found the first ceremony... Oh, it was nice, but it didn't affect me as emotionally as this one did because Same. this meant more this, to both of them. Yeah, with with uh, Paul's and recent this is conversion why to it's possibly believe. It's so important believing. to let people have whatever it is. You know, this is so that these two people. This meant more to them than I'm going to say. Many straight couples who get married in the church, and the only reason they get married in the church is because they want nice pictures. 
yeah. there are loads of people like that who get married in the church who really don't have much to say or think about the religion. Why why prevent these two people who have earnest beliefs? I, I'm and not, not going to say that Paul's got earnest beliefs. He suddenly recently acquired really, maybes. Really, really deeply believes from last week. Because there was a bit of, of sunshine God. through the window. Okay, Michael. Do you see what I'm saying, though? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I yeah, just of feels really, really deeply, deeply unfair to, to, mm. to deny them this. And then to drag them through the, the ordeal that they go through in the next couple of days is just awful. Mm. And um, I also enjoyed uh, the Oh Happy Days that the two uh, two ladies were singing. Much preferred they this got the to song. YMCA. <laughs> Me too. Me oh. too. And um, yeah, they're, they're, they're husband they and husband again. Do it. They're, they're, they're the big hus- hug together. I suppose the sad bit about this is because they were making it so secret, they could only have a small handful of people. It was, was it just this was really Bernie, Summer? Yeah. Was Todd there? Yeah, Todd was there in the minibus and Dee Dee was there. I am I kind of missed this week. You know, Dee Dee was a mega Christian for like one episode yeah. a few months ago, wasn't she? Just so that she could talk about how um, her baptism was important to her. Surely she would have had something to say about what happened to Billy after this episode. If she's if she's a Christian, yeah, do you was think she, she just was hiding? Like, do you think she was like, I don't think it's right. <laughs> I, <laughs> no, it's I, I agree with you. I really honestly, agree. it would have been nice if she had said something. Mm, I like, found it really interesting. But the fact that she was there makes you, you, you just have to fill the blanks in and say she completely 100%. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. I just think that it would have been interesting for her to have her Christianity to have meant anything to what happened. No, it did, because she was there. No, what happened afterwards, I mean. Yeah, like, I where, think where, was where was she in the discussion of is this right or is this wrong? Where was she in the all the people who were putting the vile comments, comments on the internet afterwards? Where was she helping widen Paul's door she frame? She doesn't care, does she? No. She not Let her dad do it. She's just there for the cake. <laughs> Maybe there's still a po- uh, possibility for that, I don't know. But anyway, 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 they go back to the bistro... And they have to be all hush hush about it. Yeah, and nobody knows where they've been. You know, how long? It must have been at least a good half an hour, they forty-five just, these, minutes away. It would have been an hour. Everybody's there going. All oh, right, do you know what I think now? I don't know. But I don't yeah. know what summers doing. I don't know what summers <laughs> doing in Malta. That and Dee Dee and everyone and Bernie having a massive orgy. Um, anyway, no, so, you were going one step too You far. were, you were implying. No, it. I was. It was just subtle. <laughs> Time for the first dance. I can't remember what they danced to. Possibly it was a song that I didn't know, which is almost every song, or maybe I've just forgotten. Um, but it was a it was a dance in that Paul got out of his chair and he had a, he had a hug. Hugging. They yeah, and and geez, there's only so long you can watch that, and then Bernie gets up on the dance floor and says, "Yeah, let's all join them on a dance together." And it was very nice. And Billy says, "Thank you for the perfect day." And Paul says, "I wish there were going to be oh. more perfect days." And Billy's like, "I'd rather have one with you than a lifetime with anyone else." Very nice. Oh, it was all lovely and wonderful. Very, and then very what well done. And then there's a big old cliffhanger at the end. And I was like, ah, oh, this is great. Fade to the church. Yeah. Camera pans down to yeah. the floor. And bloody summer. Bloody, she idiot. can't get anything right, this right. girl. It's one, one minute she's throwing herself onto the floor. Yeah. Next, it's a Polaroid. She's got the, the money shot, as I think Billy referred uh, to in the next episode. Right. Billy, Paul, Vicar at the altar ceremony taking place she's only gone and left bloody photo on the church floor what right in the nutty. right at the bottom of the aisle for all and sundry to see Weeps. to be honest i don't know how it was missed like <laughs> that wouldn't happen would it well, somebody it would have noticed Get over it. it a bright red carpet a bright white photograph edge I don't of a think, gay wedding. I think that that would have stood <gasps> out like a sore thumb, but never mind, <laughs> because it made a really, really great nice. cliffhanger on Monday. And it's like, oh, they are going to do something they about gonna that. Who's going to find that? I look. It was. It was a really, a really lovely day. It was a great. You know, Corey's waited sixty how many years to have one of these. Um, they had two in one day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which is great. Make, it, um, make it a double. But we still had a bit of drama, didn't we? Yeah, but not and, horrible and drama. And acknowledgement. Well, yeah. This not led like, to... oh, the bride just got off this... with the best man or. No, no, no. But this, this is what I mean about acknowledging the unpleasant elements of minor- minority life, okay? 
sometimes Coronation Street doesn't want to do that. It doesn't want to acknowledge the realities of things. They pretend that everything's all happy and hunky-dory. But it's more interesting and honest and real when it acknowledges these very sticky, unpleasant mm. aspects of, of life. And it also helps in to um, bring about change. How much did Hayley go through? When you read through... The, or watch classic, or you read through the sto- the plot lines of what Haley went through. You would imagine if you only ever watched her final years that she just you know everyone accepted her immediately and it was all happy roses and you know everyone thought she was um, brilliant and a, a beloved member of the community. No, she went through hell. She was treated like crap by so many people. She was mocked and made fun of, and she was prevented from marrying she so many barriers were put up against her from doing even the most simple things and she overcame them all with grace and dignity and you know that storyline was one of the major driving forces to uh trans acceptance in the uk oh yeah yeah right so now we've got this storyline and there are going to be people who are going to say that it's being spoiled like the first gay marriage is being spoiled because um, there's political. there's all this stuff added onto it, people being brought down and and made to feel bad about who they are. But it's 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 what happens in real life, and you cannot overcome it without acknowledging that it's real and happens. Mm. And it's not fair. But if you want it to be fair in the future, and you want future weddings to be completely unproblematic, you have to go through this um, really unpleasant process of getting everybody on the same page. And I know it's not fair. I know it's not fair. But that's you've got to be where you are. You can't pretend that we live, you know, 20 years in the future where hopefully, I don't know, Prince George gets married to, I don't know, Count Bob. Count Bob. <laughs> Who knows? There's something else that I wanted to add about this that I found very interesting, and we will absolutely go on to Tuesday in a minute, was that the synopses for Tuesday's episode didn't mention any of this. And even I think the synopsis for Wednesday's was quite vague about what would happen. But the synopses for Tuesday were all about um, the, the vaping stuff with, with Liam and, and, and Dylan. So it was like they hadn't... as far. I, I don't, you know, I don't go looking for spoilers in advance. I really try my hardest to avoid them. I have seen one or two things for next week, which is really irking me. Um, but I, I don't go looking for them. But after Wednesday's episode, I wanted to say, oh, I wonder what the synopsis said about this. This is fascinating to me. And it wasn't even there. So it was like, I wonder why they did that. Why did they hide that this element of the story was going to happen? Is it because they knew it would be really interesting? Is it because they think it's a bit bit of a risky move, a bit contentious, criticising the Church mm. of England. Let's just put it out there on the night you don't and see want what just, happens. What's his name? Justin Warby. Who? Is that the guy, church, uh, Archbishop of Canterbury? I don't know, the Archbishop of Canterbury. Don't is. want him on our case. No. <laughs> but yeah, I, I found that particular... And, and, and no pictures of this storyline in the in the press pack afterwards as well. So um, I'd be interested to know the thinking there. One can only speculate. Anyway, Tuesday. Um, Billy and Paul, over the moon... They're married, isn't it lovely? Um, And Summer and the others, I've written Summer and Co here, I'm guessing Bernie is probably involved, throw a wedding breakfast in the cafe for them. Um, Bernie brings over the Polaroids, which they'll have a look Justin Welby, what did I say? Um, Justin Warby, no. Justin Timberlake. (laughs) Um, Billy wants to know where this money shot picture is. Where's the one, Summer? Stop saying like, money shots. This is what he said. I'm quoting Billy Billy's, here. Billy's sheltered. Um, he, um, like, Summer only took one photo of them at the altar for some, for some reason. She's not professional. And um, where is it? And uh, Summer's rooting around in a bag. She can't find it. Oh, no. But then they kind of forget about it a little bit. No one for cares. For the being. Um, then Billy gets a buzz on his phone from the bishop Oops. who wants to see him urgently. <laughs> Billy's looking a little Billy's worried Billy's like, here. maybe he got me a present. <laughs> as, as lovely as the ceremony on Tuesday was for Billy, he must have still been on thinking Monday. in the back of his head on Tuesday. Monday, yes. What if I get caught? What if we get found it's out? Awful. What if somebody finds out about this? And getting a message from the bishop can't be a coincidence. And no, they meet up in the flat because... <laughs> Of course they do. Well, he's like, the bishop is like, well, I would normally meet you in the vicarage, but you... You haven't got one. You wouldn't move in there, and we've got a lovely heat pump there for you. I don't know where the um, 
I don't know where Billy's kind of base of operations is. He doesn't Does he have a deaconry or something? A I deaconry? I don't know what it's called. But anyway, they move in, They go to the flat because, of course, they do. And, Why um, not? And the bishop pulls a photo from his jacket. <laughs> what do you have to say for yourself? Can I just I, say, what? the bishop reminds me of off-season Father Christmas. Yes, I He thought... gave that vibe of, like, patron, patronly kind of, like, good-natured kind of... Yeah. I just thought he was a little bit too jovial. Yeah, he was. And a little bit too, I'm a character. He did feel a bit too sympathetic. Like, he, I, I really do think that in real life, he would have been a bit more, he would have said a bit more, had a bit more to say about the fact that, you know, you know, you know the rules here. Yeah, You're putting I think me in a needed, really difficult position. I would, I could have done with someone a little bit more serious, but I guess this character of the, of the bishop, he's been... He's probably made, what, five, six appearances now. And last time we saw him, he was getting high on Summer and Aaron's brownies, Maybe he's he? just made a habit of it. Maybe he was like, I can't go see Billy without my brownies. I, I'm going to say I did prefer John the Bishop, who was the previous bishop before. John the Bishop would have put him... He would have He would have yeah. stated his case. But, he, you know, he did an all right job. Well, the, you know, he... he the, 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 the This was to make a sympathetic face for the Church of England, you know, trying to defend yeah. the position of... You can't do this at the moment. Mm. The, the all, all the way through, he was basically saying, "You can do this, at, but not now. Yeah. There will be he a says, time. Yeah, you will be able to. Why don't you just wait for a blessing? It, it can happen." And Billy says, "No, look, that would have just felt like a patronising consola- consolation prize." I don't yeah. know. I don't know. No, I, I agree I, with him. Uh, and the bishops look saying, "Look, it's not allowed." Billy says, well, I'm not sorry or ashamed about this. Why should I abide by the rules that discriminate against me and people like me? I, I, one thing I, I really like Billy standing up for himself, but I, I was kind of annoyed with him that he has not done this at any point over the last... How long has he been in the show as a gay vicar? And now he's annoyed think, about being inconvenienced. I think he, he's been annoyed about me, you know, the whole thing about Todd wanting to live in the vicarage. I know, but I just and, feel and like this came a to. little bit too late. Maybe he's just real, you know, he thought himself, you know, he realises that he's an institution in an institution that's slowly changing and he can be patient. But now he's in that, now it really, really applies to him and he doesn't have time. But what I just want to say one thing, like Billy will have parishioners who have had the same dilemma that he's experiencing now. And what did he say to them? Mm. He hadn't advocated, we never heard him advocating for anybody else. We've never heard him saying, you know, my, uh, this lesbian couple I know, these two gay men, they could, they couldn't, it's all about him and how suddenly he (laughs) wants something and he can't have it. Yeah. Um, I get that it's because the story is limited because there's not very much time. There's too many characters, too many stories. It, this is the only time they could have brought this up, really. But is it really the only time? Because this has been... We've been talking about Billy and his position in the church for years. I mean, it invites discussion, doesn't it? If you're going to have a gay vicar, clearly they want to... You want they want you to... They, it's they, pro- they want, it's they want to go, Ooh. Yeah. But yeah, I, I understand completely and I sympathise with him, but like, the, it is quite funny that he's only bringing this up now. <laughs> anyway, but the, we ignore that. We'll the ignore bishop that. says, look, I'm going to turn a blind eye for now, but I can't condone your actions. I didn't mention earlier about how he's got the uh, photo. It was the Berger, was the it? Warden, I think they found it. The yeah. church warden. Yeah. Who the hell is this guy? This little busybody, bloody Nazi Someone's, church warden going around I, I don't grassing think it's, everybody up. I don't think it's Who fair is to this call guy? him out. Who's this guy going around tidying up and finding Just evidence? someone who's more on the literalist side of the scale. I am, um, okay, I'm not, of all the people in this storyline, this, this faceless church warden is the one I'm going to put all the blame you on. You want to go and find him and give him a piece of your mind? I'm going to tell him. Listen, sit down. Anyway, um, it was probably just somebody like Alice Tinker off the record of Dibley going, oh no, look what I found on What's the floor, What's a lovely Vicar. picture of two, 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 two men, men getting married like they're a man and a brother. woman. <laughs> I didn't know you could do that. Is that true? You can get married as two gay men? That's lovely, that, isn't it? I'm going to tell all my gay friends. They'll come here and have their weddings. The bishop's like, no. Uh-oh. Alice, sit down. I need to tell you something. It's tell you a joke. It's the end of the episode now. <laughs> right. Um, that so... doesn't make sense unless you know the Vicar of Dibley, but I'm, I'm hoping sure. that you... 
know what you, we're talking about. If you don't about. know the Rick and Morty, you do know, watch it. But you'll get it. You're in for a treat. Just watch the first series because it gets massively worse once the first series and the Christmas special and the Easter special are over. Okay, Michael. That's that's my review of watch the Rick and Morty. Um, anyway, um, Paul comes home. Billy tells him what's happened. Paul goes away, possibly. I don't know. But then the bishop comes back again. Oh, Bad dear. news. Oh, dear. The warden wants an update. Yeah, he's see? not happy about this. Yeah. And he's posted what's his up. Name? Oh yeah, Adolf. it's the warden that posted on social media as well, wasn't it? Yeah, he is a bit of a stirrer. See? Little bit. And it's getting some outrage. But like, comments. okay, just to be just to be fair, I mean, I know that this is a painful process that I have to always acknowledge everyone else's point of view, even though when they're indefensible, but I guess if you're the warden you kind of are in charge of the rules. Exactly. You, and it's although like although I'm not you don't have to post them online to you don't publicly have to shame go on Facebook. your vicar. <laughs> no. Because that's not Billy's church anymore. That used to be Billy's church, but right. now he kind of got a bunch of churches. Do you reckon? Do you reckon there's a bit of beef here between the vicar and the and the warden? Maybe they've got a bit of history. Maybe I don't know. Maybe in maybe the past, like, Billy overlooked him for a promotion. Maybe the warden's like wife does like makes brownies, and then that time that they had the weed brownies, and everyone was saying how nice the brownies were, but no one's ever said that her brownies were nice, did mm. they? No. That was just on classic Coronation Street this week. The brownie, the, the weed brownie scene. Delicious. Quite funny. Although I still... I'm not, not, not going to talk know. about that because we're going too long. Too the voice long. part wasn't so funny. Anyway, um... The, bit, Billy, the warden. Warden's put it online. Everyone's mad. Outraged from the, from the comments. Billy has a read of them. Don't They're not that, nice. Billy. Don't ever read the comments. No, don't make for pleasant reading. Um, there's even one there from Kieran, Shelley's brother. And I'm like, well, so was this, this character more back? than just someone who's going to have a punch up in the church? What is going on? Is like, this I, an insinuation here that these people actually aren't really bigoted and homophobic. They've just got personal gripes against Billy. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like, like yes. complicated things are slightly... In a way, I'm thinking, oh, good, he wasn't just one note, one punch Is he going to come back? He's got to come back, but they, I was still holding on to the fact that I really don't need the character of Kieran in Coronation Street. He was pretty vile. There's enough characters involved in this already. I would be perfectly happy if we never saw Kieran again. Sounds like we're going to have him back again. I don't know. Um, anyway, um, so that's, that's all That's all pretty rubbish. Billy's miffed off. They agree that maybe they won't go out to lunch after all. Oh, this was really sad. But they then they do. They go nice to, well, they do. They go to the tie. cafe anyway. Um, Paul says, look, the church is going to be a part for, of oh, your life longer than I will be. You, you don't want to make this right. You, yeah. yeah, you don't want to get on their bad side. Make make friends with them again, and Billy says, "No, that's that's, <coughs> that's a load of rubbish. I, you're more, but you're the most important thing to me at the moment." Then he gets a message from Radio and Weatherfield. It's the ghost of Jeff Metcalf here, wanting to talk to him about his experience. I lie. It's not the ghost of Jeff Metcalf. It's the ghost of the the flying horse landlord. Played right. by Justin Morehouse, who was it was in the show a long time. Well, no, about ten years ago, played the Flying Horses landlord. I think it was in the cricket storyline, and uh, but he has, to be fair, played a radio voice on Coronation Street a few years ago. So, well, maybe um, maybe he's moved on from the Flying Horse and he's got a job at Radio Weatherfield. It's a natural career progression. Yeah, I mean, um, you, being a landlord, you so they chat with lots of people, yeah, they very were, affable. Yeah. Um, yeah, we used to be landlords of pubs, didn't we? And now we're podcasters. Yeah, that's, that's, it's that's easy. the dumb thing. Yeah. So anyway, he wants to talk to Billy about his experience. Bernie, meanwhile, is posting some nice pictures of the wedding on her own social media. Well, she's trying to combat the hate. Yeah, I thought that this was going to be another case of Bernie doing something where she's trying to help, be, help but actually it just makes things worse. But it didn't. Well, it so kind was a knife. of. Well, no, it didn't. It had lots well, of every, nice well, comments. yeah, because. Yeah, this is the this is the trouble about social media is that everyone's got their own little bubbles, and so everyone in her bubble is like, yeah, love it, brilliant, lovely, brilliant, but everyone in the warden's bubble is like, no, mm. evil. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so there she gets loads of nice comments. I know which bubble I'd rather be in. <laughs> um. And then we get this great scene of Billy on radio. And um, he's explaining what happened. He said, look, I just wanted to get married in the sight of God. So the, And the DJ's really trying to stir things. He's trying to push. So he wants to get Can some sound bites off of Billy. This was, really, this was a really hard-hitting conversation from what I assume is Radio Weatherfield's usual afternoon lineup of, you know, has your cat ever done something funny? Have you seen a, a, a funny picture of a bird? 
like what's the traffic like yeah on the ring road um what have you got a funny anecdote about meeting a member of weatherfield county <laughs> yeah so it goes he, 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 this this radio guy probably thinks that he's, he's like he wants to make a career he's got, for got a scoop here so he's, he's like, like so right. is church law wrong is that what you're saying archdeacon i can't imagine i mean i don't you know, if you said that I don't listen to local radio, I can't imagine tuning in to local radio and having a vicar being grilled about homosexuality in the Church of I don't England. Know, maybe it goes on. I maybe it we, does. We literally never Maybe we're to missing the radio. out. Uh, and Billy, Billy thinks hard about this question and then he says, yes, church law is wrong. Oh, oh. Right. He says, look, I'm sick and tired of giving politicians answer here. I just want to speak openly about yeah. who I am, who I love. And then he gives this lovely impassioned speech about Paul and, and everything and the, why, why God's important to him and why it's time for change, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And the DJ says, are you sorry for what you've done? Billy's like, I'm always sorry if my actions have hurt other people. Such a bicker answer. But I'm not sorry about this. What makes me sorry is the vile hatred that me and my husband have now been subjected to it makes me embarrassed to wear my dog colour and if I'm forced to make choices well I know where my heart's going to lead me and uh, he, he, it's, it's really really nice stands up for himself at once well performed by Dan Brockerbank and, um, and, and I liked having uh, being able to see Paul and Summer and Bernie and Ches probably um, and Gemma listening on in the radio they kind of were, were cutting back I probably would have quite liked to have seen other characters listening on it was very much like <laughs> There was a whole bunch of people on Coronation Street that had nothing to do. They probably didn't even realise that Billy got married this week. No. It was like a pocket of about 10 to 15 that were really invested in this. But can you imagine um, Tim and Steve in the cab office listening to this, like, going, oh... Yeah, or that's maybe quite, I don't... That's quite dramatic. I think like, having that or having Rita listening to it in the cabin Rita's or something. Going, oh, I can't David even. cutting someone's hair and going, oh, I was making a few I'm... sly digs about them on Monday, but actually... I was, that, a good I point. was at the... They didn't invite me to that bit, that's not fair. Yeah. Um, and Shona, I, Shona's mad because she missed out on two gay weddings. It, it could have, you know, I'm not... You know, Gail's... Gail's aid and suicide speech was very special, but I think we're just a little bit doing it in a slightly different way it could have made even more of an impact than it did. Yeah. It's a bit like um, was it Ken's speech that he made after Sinead died or before she died, I can't remember. I, I felt it was just a little step below being a really, really all-time classic, iconic, iconic curry speech. But never mind, they tried their best. But it was all right. <laughs> Paul, Paul, they're all proud. Billy, Billy was great, yeah. Um, and then uh, back home later, Billy gets a call from the bishop. <laughs> He's been indefinitely <laughs> suspended. Indefinitely. That's what With I said. full pay. Yeah, nice. Sign me up. Yeah, sure. I'll um, be a heretic if I get paid. Honeymoon time. Um, yeah, so shocker, not really. The I bishop's, mean, the bishop's, the bishop's, like, bishop's what are you hands doing? are tied. What can you do? Um, you, I told you, <laughs> I specifically told you, like, don't. Like we'll just let this lie. We'll just won't. We won't take this further. And then you're on the radio saying that church law's wrong. Yeah. You're not the arch. The thing is, it wouldn't be let lie. If the verger put this on social Warden. media, Warden, he was he. It was gonna, it was going to have Warden to come is. out eventually. You couldn't just put no, it under it the carpet. No, it was kind of wishful thinking that he um, ever thought that this wouldn't be a thing. Yeah. So, um, yeah, good for Billy for standing up for his Stand beliefs, up for yourself. Um, it's Wednesday. The story still goes, but it's not quite as powerful as as it was the previous day. But um, he he just he's kind of making peace with what's happened now summer's fuming for him um but he's like look at least i'm being paid it's over it's done with can't go back now um and before they can talk about it any longer paul gets a mysterious phone call because he's getting an electric wheelchair today how very exciting for him um so no uh, drama on wednesday is that it's too wide to go in the flat door so he's got one of these wide load um no it's because there's all that stuff and it's there's nowhere to put it because the... What? You can't make gestures on a podcast. I know, but I'm trying to stair get lift. you... Yes. Stair lift. It's too... It's, it's, the stair lift's in the way. Mm. Anyway, so um, what are they going to do about that? Well, luckily for them, Ed the Builder was just walking past and Paul's like... Hey, He's like... Do, do, right, do, do, do. Would you like to do a bit of work You didn't me? get me a wedding gift. Ed's like, yeah, I'll do it. As long as it's okay with Tracy. No one checks with Tracy. Little reminder there that Tracy owns... owns of, I'd forgotten. Had you forgotten? Don't worry, I had as well. Um, anyway, and then they have this bizarre scene where it looks like they're being accosted, um, accosted by this troop of arsy parishioners who are walking down the cobbles, face like thunder, and then it's like, 
Oh, congratulations on your wedding, Vicar. We're so I, we're so I pleased for you. This was These a bit... people on the on the internet are a Cheesy. bunch of asses. It was yeah, a bit. They, they were like, "We're marching to tell you what we think," yeah. and it's all positive. It, it, it was a bit. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a bit cliche and trying. And then but... so that, yeah, they're like, "Oh, you're the bishop's a right a right pillock." Right pillock, yeah. One of... And then Summer scurries off to make everyone a cup of tea, and I love the fact that Billy was like, "Oh, the lady brings a bottle of champagne out of her bag to Perhaps, celebrate." Yeah. Their, their wedding and Billy's like you're not coming in my house <laughs> you're all standing out here yeah and most of them very very quietly uh, it was a it was an angry bun no it was a they're all very stern looking they were very they? stern they but hate, they the hate vast homophobia. majority had nothing to say because they were unpaid they just they were just got rolled up by Babs she's in the she's in the robes you can well no she's not they must have all been down the bistro boozing up and getting all tanked up getting all feisty and then she leads them all down and then she fakes out, and there's half of them again. I thought we were, I thought we were going to pitchfork him. Maybe they were just like, "This is our one and only episode on Coronation Street. Shall we do a classic Coring fake out?" Yeah, let's yeah. do it. Yay! <laughs> anyway, there's one member there that, well, he's obviously not marching with them, but he shows up and he looks. Oh, awful... he walks past. Oh, did he? This is the guy that I said that looks like Zach Dingle off of Emmerdale. <laughs> he was, he was quite farmerish, and um, he makes his feelings about the whole charade perfectly clear. Billy, you're not allowed to do this. It's a disgrace. I don't like et cetera, you being et cetera, gay. Et cetera, et cetera. And, and Billy's like, married. well, for your information, my husband is dying, actually, so he's not going to be in my life or anyone else's for much longer. And Paul, hmm. Paul's like, oh. And, 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 and Zach, I'm glad I knew already. Zach does kind of have the good graces to back off a little bit there. Paul's, yeah, Paul's behind Billy going, oh, I wish you hadn't um, bandied well, about my think, prognosis in public. I don't think like it's that, that is husband. it? There was a bit of it. I think. I think I'd be a bit annoyed because I'm the one who gets to say things like that. I'm people. the one that gets to dramatically announce that I'm dying. Yeah. Um, so Ed tells Billy, sorry, um, it's going to, this is a big job. Oh, yeah, I'll do we, it in a few weeks. Yeah, do it in a few weeks. But then Babs, the, the, the leader of the parishioners, offers to lead a bit of muscle, lend a bit of muscle. Sorry. She's not going to do any work. She, she, well, she says that she does a martial arts or whatever it was, weightlifting, I can't remember. You don't know how to did. knock a door down. Shut up, Babs. Well, anyway. It, it... She also, she's just, I think this woman is a compulsive liar because she's, first of all, she says, oh, yeah, we've all come to tell you that we think you're brilliant, which clearly half of them weren't there for that at all. Secondly, she says she's won the lottery and then she says she does. Oh, yeah, she did, didn't she? She says she does taekwondo or something. No, you're just lying. <laughs> Tell you what, I was, that does this remind me, this, this, um, <laughs> this Zach Dingle character. Mm. Oh, wouldn't it have been great if it had been Geraldine? What, Je- um, Granny, uh, Granny Spellman. Spellman? Yeah. I knew this you shouldn't have story, adopted my grandchild. This story would be so much better, and it's already quite good, if Granny Spellman came out of the woodwork. It's been a good five then, years or so, at least, since we've seen her. Maybe she and the warden are, still... oh, like, yeah, buddies. Yeah, ma- maybe they are. Like... Yeah. I Maybe. just think just have it as being really personal like that. And it feels like they're not going to bring this character back now because now would be the perfect time for it. But I would really, really love an appearance you know, of Granny Spellman you're saying, by now. You're saying that, but I mean, the character I miss the most in this is Emily Bishop. Yeah. I wonder and if I, she was one of the people that was put in dodgy comments. She's probably on Facebook going, like, these gays ruining no. our church. I honestly think it would have been a really interesting story if, if she had been involved, because I think she would have initially have been quite against this idea. But I also think that Billy could have sat her down and had a conversation with her. No, I'm not sure she would have done, because do you remember the story where Sean thought that Emily was being... Yeah, I know. It was when they had the raffle or something at the Rovers, I can't remember what yeah. it was, and she was like, no, no I, I don't she... want to be involved in that, and then Sean yes. says, oh, it's because you're homophobic, and she says, no, I, I just don't like that sort of thing. Can't no, I... Raffle. Yes. She loves a raffle. I do know that, but I'm saying there's... The... in there's like you said there's a spectrum isn't there and i think that emily is on the spectrum and i you know sorry to speak for somebody who's not in the show anymore but she's not real um i think she would have been on the spectrum of i love and accept everybody as jesus taught me but i draw the line at going against church law and getting married in a church but i also think it would have been um it, that would see because there you get this you get to represent this is the thing okay right there are people that hold bigoted and unpleasant and wrong beliefs but they're not really bad people they just haven't 
really thought about the human beings behind what they're talking about. And I do believe that people are good on the whole. And I think that if you humanised this perspective by giving it to somebody like Emily Bishop, you open the door. Instead of slamming it and saying you're a bigot and you're hateful and you're wrong, if you open someone's mind up a little little bit, you've got a better chance of changing it and leading them to your perspective. So if you represent that view, and I know some people aren't going to agree with this and I fully understand, but I hope you understand where I'm coming from. My perspective is you've got to meet people where they are. And if you want to change people's minds, you can't shout at them and tell them that they're, that they're evil even if that's true. I just think it would be very risky for Coronation Street to make Emily have these views. She wouldn't be appearing in the programme and it would be almost like people have hold her. What do you mean not appearing in the programme? I'm saying if she was in the show. Okay, well, I'm I'm kind of thinking along the lines of, you know, maybe she writes him a letter or something and says these things. If she was still in the show and then then she says... Okay, yeah, maybe maybe it would Listen, I don't... I, I, I love you, Billy, you know, you're... You know, the same way as I love any any human being, but the the law is very clear. The church law is very clear. She does try. She's as being a, stickler, a stickler, right? And then Billy sits her down and says, "Look, Emily, I I think that you're wrong, and this is why. I love Paul the same way that you loved Ernest. Mm. And if she stops and thinks about it, and then she changes her mind and becomes on his side." then you've represented that side of the equation, but you've also opened the door for yeah. for a, a, a perception a perception change. Instead of having Zach Dingle going, you're all horrible and I hate you burn in hell. I Some just, people are like that. Yes, I know, but... You, I would have just I, I really appreciated... No, no, that, that's good. With, with In the absence of Emily, I don't think it would have been good to have had her contact them with that point of view. I wasn't no, suggesting... No, 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 I'm just... No, 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 I'm saying that... No, no, okay, that was I never that what I meant. Now. What would have been, again, very lovely this week is for them to have received a letter from Emily because we we like a contact from characters in the past. I mean, I'm not expecting her to do another Zoom call. How long was it since Ken had his 80th birthday and we last saw Emily on the show? Well, I mean, Ken's 105 uh, I would, now. You know, that would be... What a treat to have had a little mini cameo from Emily saying, you go, Billy. Um, but in the absence of that, just a letter from Emily would have been absolutely, that would have been, and it's so easy to do. And you I know would have what? thought, you know, we I'm not involved got... in this thing, but having her write a letter, that would have taken, we could have got... taken the 30 seconds of a scene. We could have got Toya involved. Why Toya? Spider told me to give you this. It's from Emily. Yeah, yeah. Also, where's her brooch? Where's her brooch? Mm. Where's uh, Toya's, Toya's spider, spider brooch? brooch? I don't know. Anyway, that's basically it. Paul, Paul's there saying, um, oh, Billy, well, I didn't realise. Paul says later on, oh, when you were saying that about me dying, I, I didn't realise this was hard on you that I've got MND, <laughs> but now you, I realise it is and you've been very supportive, so I'm going to make sure I support I you very just selfish. as well as well. And then he does a big speech at the end of the episode when the parishioners finish the door frame and Which says, three cheers for Billy. And um, no, you're you're glossing over the point of this. I'm sorry, it's just been doing Paul a story says, for a long time now. Paul says, "I'm sorry that this is affecting you as much as it is me, and I've only been thought thinking of myself." So then he does this selfless thing where he does a, a public speech, which he doesn't want to, encouraging the parishioners to support Billy in the future. Yes, that is what happened. You're absolutely And he right. says, "You you guys need to support him when I'm not here." Basically, mm. which was which was heart wrenching but also incredibly mature and brave of Paul so what do you think that lies in the future for Billy in the church because the way that he he has I I can't see how he can go back to the Church of England after publicly criticising and I know Radio Weatherfield probably doesn't get that higher listenership but um, he, he's out there and he's said it. This is the sort of thing that probably would make the local news or maybe no, the this national is news, make the to national, be honest. No, this is going to make the national... This will make the national news. But if, will it? I don't know. In the, in, in the show. In, 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 yeah, in the show, will it? They put, they put all sorts on the front of the Weatherfield Gazette, but this, who knows? Um, it's still so going he, on that man's face. I don't, I don't know face. how he can go back to the church in the state it is, but maybe they're banking on these changes to come about and then they'll say, well, 
you broke the law then, but we've changed the law now, we'll let you in. Or is this actually the end for Billy working for the church? I mean, to be fair, we never see him do any work. I think it was Navdeep on the Facebook group posted this week. But who's going to dish up the soup now? Well, yeah, um, he could be a freelance soup what, disher upper. He could, uh, yeah. I mean, isn't what, that what, Gordon Ramsay's job? <laughs> what, what is Billy going to do now? Does he set up a charity? Does he base himself in the community centre? Could he set up his own little breakaway church in Weatherfield? I, I don't know how cult. these things work. Yeah, maybe, maybe he could. I, I'm really quite interested in seeing what he does with that, but it, I don't need to see it until after Paul's um, six feet under. Let's This does. Go this back really to does maybe. leave it, everything in limbo a little bit, and it? it's one of these things where Coronation Street cannot help itself but to stick its fingers in all the pies at once. Mm. I mean, it... It certainly was overdue to have this discussion of, of Billy's perception of himself as a gay um, man in the Church of England, knowing what he knows about being treated as basically a second class citizen. Um, but what is he going to, yeah, what is he going to do now? I mean, the idea that he works for a charity or, or sets up a foundation or something. I don't think it would make any difference to us as viewers as to what he does all day long. Mm. I think it would be I think it would be a fairly seamless transition between him going I'm off to the vicarage to I'm off to the headquarters. I mean he could get a job in Gregory Pope, couldn't he? I don't think you I mean yes, but not working in the charity shop because that you don't get paid for that. Oh yeah, good point. I mean if um, only he'd been saving all these pennies from his his archdeacon I, I days. I assume that as part of the um the, the wedding, there's no kind of life insurance for, from Paul because uh, I don't think they let don't you think sign they'd up let for that. Have it. No. Yeah. Okay. I think I think we're all done we for that story. About it we enough. might have talked about that a little bit. Um, we've gone through all our all my thoughts about it as it went. I just thought it was very very nicely done. Yes, there were parts that I would have tweaked a little bit, but on the whole, I was not expecting that this week. Um, I'm really I'm, pleasantly I'm surprised. Very satisfied with I think Coronation Street out. did a very delicate job of uh, working its way through very important and controversial issues. Um, I think it was sympathetic to almost, like I said, almost everybody. Mm. And I, you know, and I said, you know, I know that I'm in a privileged position to say that you have to try to convince people who are bigoted in a in a in a nice way. There's definitely room to be, you know, there's loads, there's loads of different approaches and there's all, there's room for all of those things. I'm not, I'm not saying that's not the case. Mm. Just what, well, I just want to acknowledge that. Like sure. there are loads of ways to protest things and change things. I have one way, you might have a different way. I think together with all the different ways, we're more powerful, aren't we? <laughs> That's what I'm uh, saying. Why are you laughing summarized. at me? I don't know where you were going with that one. Well, I don't know no, what to say. I'm nice just saying. Conclusion. I don't want anyone to think that because I have a different perspective on how to tackle some issues. I don't care about them. No, no. Because I do. Can we can we have something a little um, less brain power that's well, needed to enjoy? Well, you know what's coming up now. next. I don't know why you're saying it like that for. Gone tomorrow. No, I'm just saying. I'm just trying to segue in. I thought that was a very lovely discussion. Thanks. I think people. I hope people enjoyed listening to that. Well, I'd like to know what everyone what else thought. Yeah, I mean, we we are not in a position particularly to, to to represent Paul and Billy in a in a really good way because we're not gay men. <laughs> I know that we do have people listening who are, so please let us know what you thought. Yeah, let's it, talk murder, it, Gemma. Let's talk serial I'm killing, far murdering, more comfortable with murderers, Thailand flying. We can all agree that it's wrong dropping. unless it's Tim. In which case, I know everyone's rooting for him to be killed. Right, come on, come on, come on. All right, on Tuesday, <laughs> you're really annoying because I'm... <laughs> what? I'm getting to it. Okay. On You're the one that spent 15 minutes at the beginning of the episode waffling on about nothing. It was not nothing. We had very... What we even on Tuesday, about? Jenny, exactly. Jenny doesn't know what to do with herself. AI. Re, Jenny and... Stephen are living with Rita and Jenny's kind of at a loose end. She doesn't know what to do with herself. The, the, she's not the landlady of the Rovers anymore. The Rovers are shuttered up. She's got nothing to do. And Rita tells her that she's she's going to go on holiday with Stephen to Thailand, which is his plan to get out of being accused of murder, if only it was that simple. Um, 
Rita does n- nobody knows this obviously apart from Re- from Stephen. So Rita's like saying, "Yeah, it's good to go to Thailand." Blissfully unaware that it's an alibi. Yeah. Well, what, what, for a what's, murder or not what's really, Stephen's but... plan when he gets to Thailand? Because he's shown heard Jenny later on this, this week about you know here's <clears throat> I, I happen to know somebody there who owns a bar. Maybe we can get that. But well, he looked it up, Michael, and you can't get extradited. Mm. Oh, did he? Well, that's why he googled. He Googled places to get lost in, but I didn't know whether no, it was doing the go- extradition no, laws. No, I thought, I thought it, was it was top ten places that you... No extradition? No, 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 no. It was just places to disappear in. I think he's kind of I thinking think that implied, there's lots of dense jungles there or you something. You think he's going to live in the jungle well, like I it's apocalypse know. now? I don't know what he's got planned. <laughs> and and I've also seen some people discussing this online as well. Mm. And kind of the conclusion was that he's kind of making it up as he goes along. Yeah. And and that fits with his modus operandi for the whole story, yeah. really. There's He's no just plan here. Of, no. I let's, mean, get, let's get over there and he figure can't, it out. But is Stephen he, lives in the moment. He can't change what's happened. So he just moves forward. The thing is, I He's don't believe real... that he wants to go and bump off Jenny because no. he, he want, it seems like he and Jenny are actually got feelings for each other. Stephen's had the hots for her for a while anyway. Um, but he can't live a normal public life there knowing that it's very likely that the police are going to be after him so what's what's the plan i don't know i don't think we're going to find out i don't think it's going to work think out he might be caught up with before he gets he really i mean i don't know why anybody thinks he's got a plan because steven's never demonstrated any aptitude for forward thinking has he he's ne- he's never really considered the consequences of his actions beyond like the next week or so hmm. so anyway um Stephen Stephen's just convinced that they're going to move to Thailand and he wants them to start looking for flats and things over there and he says there's no point hanging about and he finds um Jenny in the in the cafe later and shows her oh look at this cinnamon social bar it's my friend owns it and and he wants a manager I can't like nobody nobody ever talks about this on Cory but it really winds me up what do you need a visa do you need like what as some kind of paperwork. Look, you're talking about a man that didn't realise that his wife's life insurance wouldn't um, pay out if she com- if she uh, killed herself. No. So I know, but it just. I mean, Jenny is Jenny not also thinking a about this. Man that who probably should know a bit more about fine print. But but why don't they ever talk about it? That just one line. Do I not need a visa, Stephen? Don't worry about it. You can work cash in hand until we sort that out. Mm. Maybe it's coming next week. Anyway, so Maybe they Jenny have to move fast now. because, you know, he needs a manager now. And Jenny's like, oh, I don't know if I want to go now. Uh, I didn't really mean to say yes yesterday. Uh, I just did it on a whim. We need, to, we need to get real. So she goes to talk to Rita in the evening and she's tying herself in knots. And Rita says, you need to make the best choice for you. Thanks, Rita. Bloody hell, Rita. God damn it. That's not helpful. Rita's just kind of like you saying... You useless off your, old bird. Off your pop. I'm not really She's like, get out of my house. That. Get out of my house. I don't <laughs> care where you go. <laughs> On Wednesday, Jenny's in the... In the if we, Jenny goes off to Thailand... Yeah. Rita ain't going to be visiting many times, is she? She's she, never going to go there. She could there. well be saying, goodbye, I'm possibly never going to see you again. No, I know. She's like, get out. I don't care. Also, n- n- not a comment at all from Jenny about the fact that she's leaving Daisy... No, I know. Daisy well, Daisy finds said... out, doesn't she? She comes, she finds out on Wednesday. Right, on Wednesday, Rita and Jenny in the cabin together and she, Jenny says, right, keep this under your hat. I'm going to go with Stephen to Thailand in, in, in the next few weeks, but don't tell anybody. I want it to be a surprise for Stephen. Then we get this side story with Sally and Tim. And Sally, oh, Tim was such an <laughs> arsehole. <laughs> Listen, okay, right. If you're, if you're a Tim fan... Give me the rationale for why this was not a dickhead move from him, okay? Sally specifically says, Tim, I've got a package coming. Don't open it. You don't have to open it. It's got my name on it. It doesn't have your name on it. Be a normal human being. Don't even listen to what I'm saying. Just when you see my name on a package, you don't open it, okay? But added on to that, I'm specifically telling you, the one that's coming today... Don't open it, all right? I want you to be in for it, but don't open it. I thought it was funny. It was like, is it out kinky? No, it's not, you pervert. <laughs> it was, it's something in leather. Right. 
Yeah. So Carla's on the phone later, chasing up documents, she tells Stephen, but then it turns out she's actually on the phone trying to get some information about this hair result. And it's not, not a perm, <laughs> it's to do with the LSD. So she finds out from the, um, I don't know, the lab. The scientists. The scientists, yeah, at Pan 10, that they've already delivered <laughs> this uh, this package, this th- these results a week ago, but they sent it to the wrong address. I don't get what this the point odd. of that was. I don't understand. This, there like, was some reason why Why couldn't why they have happened. just said, oh yeah, we'll send it today, or don't worry, it'll be with you tomorrow. Well, how why about would, we just email it to you? Why would streetcars have kept hold of a package for Carla Connor and not just said, here you go, Carla, here why you go, we got upstairs neighbour. Well, they, uh, they literally on the phone, she's like, streetcars? No, it should have gone to streetcars flat. Why did you send it to the wrong place? Oh, sorry, Carla. Anyway. Yeah, I, so I, I goes, thought that was unnecessary. That was weird. I, I think it's one of those things that I feel is like an artefact of some kind of weird behind the scenes thing that we don't understand and never will. Yeah, well, the whole thing like with this the, hair, it's just, I, I'm, not, I'm not buying it because... The dates are wrong. Right, listen, don't worry about it. I'm really trying hard to bury Michael, the fact that her hair would not show any LSD. They, I don't know why they was... brought up the 90 day thing because it's clearly confusing everybody. But your hair is in your head for longer than 90 days. Yeah. So therefore it would show up, wouldn't it? I don't know, sorry. Right. I don't know. Days, right, so Daisy finds Jenny in the cafe. She says, oh, I've heard you're going to bloody Thailand. Why are you not telling me? And Jenny says, oh, sorry, but you, I don't even know why Rita told you. She's such a loose-lipped old bitch, isn't she? <laughs> she ever just stared at me like, am I allowed to say that? You said it now. I know. I'm not going to bleep you, I so now the whole world will know ragging. what you think about as everybody, Queen Rita. As everybody noticed, I've started ragging on Rita in the last, like, six months or so. <laughs> I just think it's funny. Anyway, She so, has given it to Mavis for all those years. It's she just can payback. Take it. This is karma. Anyway, so, so she says, like, oh, so, sorry, but I, I, didn't, I haven't even told Stephen about this. And then in walks Stephen and Jenny tells him. And they have a little kissy celebration. Just screw Daisy, obviously. She didn't, didn't care about that. So... Carla goes and finds this letter and she walks down the road with it and then Peter walks up and says, oh, what you got there? And she says, oh, I got this letter here from, from the LSD people. And she opens it and she says, oh, what is spiked? I can't believe it. And Peter immediately says, I, I apologise. I'm sorry, I didn't believe sorry, you. Sorry, I thought you were having a breakdown. Sorry, I, I nearly... Com- well, did she get committed? I can't remember. Yeah, she, she did. Didn't did. She? She and did. that was expensive. She gets to the loony bin. That was an expensive mistake. Yeah. That would like cost them 10 grand, didn't it? <laughs> Carla says, um, it was obviously Rufus that did this. Hmm. So she, later on, she's looking on her laptop um, for her calendar to see if she can correlate the dates that she was ill with the dates that she met up with Rufus to try to find a pattern. But unfortunately, one of the dates doesn't match because she, he wasn't even in the country. So it couldn't have been him. Um, and then we get <laughs> this guy's on Twitter, isn't he? This postman. Is he? Yeah. I didn't know this. Yes, you did. I thought you replied to him. Or no. One of us. Well, I somebody did anyway. <laughs> you confuse yourself with me all the time. We're one pe- well, one person. So anyway, yeah. So this guy, he's definitely he's yeah TV burp star of tomorrow today. I don't even remember what. What was well, he was the very skit? Tassy, I, was wasn't like, he? I, d- I didn't need that skit. I don't know well, a lot okay. of people liked no, it. He, but... Yeah, I thought it was. I thought it was funny, but. Him asking he Tim said, whether he's Sally. Yeah, you, I can't give you the letter unless it's your name. And this was like the battle of no wits whatsoever, wasn't it? <laughs> it really was. Yeah, anyway, he, uh, he ends up giving um, Tim Tim the parcel. And, oh, it was funny because he says, I've got to take a po- photo. And then Tim like, oh, yeah, does a pose kind of with, him, with his ah, parcel. Were you kind of maybe admitting there that Tim did something that was kind of funny? No, I hate him. <laughs> right, so Tim takes the parcel inside and he just tears it open. Yeah. Immediately. And he doesn't he, even like try to sneakily peel away it's the like envelope. He's, it's it's like, are we supposed to, is this insinuating that he's so stupid that he's forgotten this very protracted conversation where he promised his wife he wouldn't open this parcel or what? He just rips it open and then he, like he's, it's like he's like an orangutan going through a, a lady's handbag, like picking stuff out, opening a box, I think looking he just at thought, everything. I really want to know what's inside it and I'll tell Sally that I forgot and she'll believe me because she That's knows I'm really That's even worse. Bad. 
What's worse? A minute he's manipulative or he's stupid. <laughs> so anyway, he opens this up and there's a note and it says, Happy third wedding anniversary, love Sally. And I think then he reacts like, Oh dear, I forgot I shouldn't have opened this and he and then he he's like he sellotapes it together yeah. like some kind like it's still like an orangutan. <laughs> right, so it becomes apparent Did he use gorilla tape? <laughs> um Carla realises that the, the only two people, through, through some kind of convoluted conversation it, about full really fat milk, was. which which came up before when she said it was too cowy, and now she does still doesn't like full fat milk. My question is, who the hell is buying full fat milk for a work office tea? Semi skimmed is love. Always semi, always semi skimmed. The one in the middle. Full fat goes off too fast. Nobody likes skimmed. If you're if you're dieting, get over yourself. Have the semi skimmed milk or nothing. Agreed. Why? Is, who's buying full fat milk? Anyway, she doesn't like it, and then she realizes, because because I think oh, whoever it is that makes it's like I never make a tea. I don't know what you like. She realizes the only two people that really make her tea are Michael and Stephen. So therefore, they are the two prime suspects for who gave her LSD. Why she thinks this was done to her at work, mm. I'm not By sure. The of tea. And why she thinks it was tea, I don't know. But she's completely right, so we're just going to skip all those leaps of logic or whatever. When Stephen comes back from a meeting, Carla tells him, right, shut the door. I know it's you. I know what you've done. <laughs> and she tells him... Big massive pennies drop, she says. She tells him that she knows he's the one who gave her the LSD. And he's like, What? No. <laughs> and then Sarah and Michael come in because they love drama. They're like drama vampires. <laughs> What's happening? And uh, Michael's like, no, that's silly. Why would why would Stephen give you LSD? And Stephen's like, oh, I swear on my mom's life, I would never. <gasps> Can you believe he Taking said the name that? Of Audrey in vain. <sighs> no, what she dies now. Sarah is looking very suspicious. Um, of Stephen oh yeah of Stephen and then Stephen starts saying to her like obviously Carla's Carla's going mad again she's having a breakdown let's not tell anybody um and I think Stephen saying that is making Sarah even more suspicious of him like he's trying to avoid the word tick tock tick tock yeah don't tell anybody. So then Stephen finds Jenny in the bistro making plans to go to Thailand. And he says, look, I've had a rough day. Can we just go home? I don't want to have a meal. But she says, yeah, no problem. But on the way home, I want to go to the police station to see if they've got an update on Teddy. But when she... Oh, no. Then we get Sally coming sorry, home. Sorry, I'm sorry I put the Sally stuff. But it is the same storyline. Sally really, comes home it? and she says, Tim... Where's that parcel? And Tim gives her like a ball of rubbish. <laughs> and, and and she's supposed to not realise that he's opened it. And she's obviously a smarter than a 10 year old. So she says, you've opened this, haven't you? And he says, oh, I'm really sorry. And she's mad at him, but not for long enough, in my opinion. No, she, she forgets she, she enables all of this behaviour. <laughs> why would you lie? He's a liar. He's manipulative and he's stupid. If I'd done this, I'd, I'd be in the doghouse for many an hour, wouldn't I? I cannot... I'm sorry, but this is one of those small things that just indicates complete and utter lack of respect for somebody. It's not difficult to not open someone's post. I know I'm not supposed to be making, making a big deal about this, but this is one of the reasons why I hate him. <laughs> he does stuff like this all of the time. This is completely within his character and everyone thinks he's a lovable oaf. He's not. He's like a domestic abuser. He's a gaslighter. He's a liar and he's stupid. Anyway. Carla and Peter are in the flat later and Carla's pacing around and uh, she's calling uh, and she and Peter, you know, think that Stephen's done this. Peter thinks he's a scumbag. They just need to find evidence. And they're wondering, where did he get this LSD from? They're obviously Rufus is the main candidate. And then Carla starts to think and put things together that maybe Stephen is the one who spiked Rufus because she says that his wife, I've forgotten her name, had specifically said that she he, he would never take that much normally yeah. and the fact that he died with that much in his system was suspicious so she starts to wonder did Rufus get murdered by Stephen and was it because he was onto Stephen's tricks I just thought that she was coming to these correct 
leaps of logic and a little bit too quickly. It all came very quickly it, it was, and easily. I would have rather she'd have pieced this together a little bit more over time. It was like, what? Super Sight Week next week. Let's get Carla to under- let's get Carla to figure out what it was. It was frustrating after months and months of this happening for this to all just slot into place in a space of five yeah, minutes. Yeah, all, all because of some hokey hair LSD result and and somebody making her a cup of tea. I just, I don't know how I would have I mean, wanted it to come out. I mean, the evidence, you know, the breadcrumbs were there. They've, they've set this up. This doesn't make sense. It just felt like it came too quickly. Anyway, Jenny comes out of the police station, no news there, but she gets the feeling that they, they know more than they're telling her. And yeah, well, the last time we saw Swain was when she was given the... the the eye to Stephen in the back of the Rovers last week when she was we, we saw that she was starting to suspect, didn't we? Yes. So um, Car- Carla arrives and uh, Stephen's there with, yes, with Jenny. Jenny. Jenny and Car- yes, and she and she sort of goes in and she's not telling them what she's there for. And obviously Stephen is really concerned, so he sends Jenny home and says, "I'll, I'll get a kebab on the way home." But actually, he goes inside, the which police was station. weird because we didn't see him inside the police station. Just, we saw him outside again later. So he just Stephen sort of goes just in and looks and then comes back out again. Uh, one hundred and eighty degrees. Maybe returned, he yeah. needed the toilet. Maybe he did. Everyone's favorite. Or maybe he needed to go to a poo poo at the popo. <laughs> Very funny. Everyone's favourite mother-in-law turns up. It's oh, Elaine. Oh, bloody hell. What's Elaine doing I back, really honestly? liked our theory that she was already dead. I thought it was my theory. But, all right, I was giving you credit. I like my theory that Elaine was already dead and Stephen killed her ages ago. But uh, no, she's alive. She comes like, to number four. Did anybody cheer when Elaine came back? Or was it, was it just a collective groan? Oh, some people like her. I know. I don't dislike her. I don't, I just... She she, she's not great. She's always turning up, isn't she? She turns she's up. such a turner-upper. I know. And she's like... <laughs> Serial turner-upper. Yeah. Okay, right. So Carla's You're telling... you murdered now. Is that going to be his last victim? I've come to die. <laughs> Literally, it was. It's like, hi, hi, I guess Stephen might kill somebody I, next I week. I thought you were auditioning lambs to the slaughter, so I <laughs> turned up Honestly, with my big coat. it could, couldn't have been more obvious. Right, so Carla tells Swain in the police station everything that's happened. And Swain's like, this is all circumstantial evidence. I mean, almost everything's circumstantial evidence. But there you go. She she needs more evidence to to haul Stephen in. But um, she's happy for Carla to just go and find it herself. Why don't you go put yourself in mortal danger, <laughs> um, and we'll get Craig Tinker to save you, maybe. <laughs> um, so sorry about that. So Carla leaves, but she bumps into Stephen on the way out, and she says, "I'm not letting you get away with this." And she swans off, or swains off, <laughs> and uh, Stephen's glaring. Um, so he goes off to the factory. For some I wanted reason, Stephen to pull face behind Carla. Yeah, I wanted microwave him to do face. his <laughs> face. Um, I tell you what, Jenny's a patient woman. She's obviously not hungry. Yeah, she's she waiting has to for wait a long kebab. time for this kebab. So she still Steve... doesn't get it as far as we know. Yes, she does. Does she? Well, he comes out with a bag. I'll yeah, tell you in a minute. We don't see him feeding it to her. Maybe he eats it on the way home out, stress eating. Mm. Right, so in the factory, Stephen is buying plane tickets. Everybody mark this down in your calendars. This is not when this is going to happen. But he's bought plane tickets for the 23rd of October. When is the 23rd of October? So that's... It is a Monday. It's a Monday. But it it's is... in two and, a, two and a bit weeks time. Right, okay. I so do we I've... think he's got that long? I don't... Not sure. I'm, I'm really starting to think I, not I do this think point, if and something... I don't know for sure. I don't know for sure, but... happens... Uh, I don't know that they'll let him on the plane. Yeah. Anyway, he buys two tickets, one way only. And then Sarah comes in... So he closes the laptop and she's like, you know what? You need to give Gran the money back and I'm not going to keep my mouth yeah, shut. Yeah, if you're going off to Thailand, can you pay up before pay you up. leave the continent, please? And I uh, think that's all you write about that. But she is very suspicious of him and you can tell that she's going to be causing him problems. Mm, mm. So, uh, Swain is like clocking off, just like Dr. Gaddis on my way home. I'm going to do a bit more work because I, I love it. Um, she finds Carla in the street and she says... Right outside Prima Donna. That's right. She says, Carla, I need yeah. a private conversation with you. This is sensitive information. We can't let anybody hear this, especially... Especially, especially not Stephen. Stephen. Reed. He can't know we're onto them, which is unfortunate for both of them because he's there listening, very obviously, in the doorway of Prima Donna, not making any, any effort whatsoever to hide. He is really tall... 
He's very conspicuous, mm. but somehow... A detective of all people. A detective Sally, and a woman... should be good at spotting things. And a woman who's literally just told him that he's not getting away with it. Don't see him there mm. in their peripheral. They've got some kind of peripheral vision damage. I hate people overhearing things on current. Well, anyway, streets. he overhears them saying that they're going to bring Duke him down. Coincidences again. Later on, we see Elaine talking to Tim. She's found a lovely flat in the country. <laughs> I'm definitely not going to be too dead to go and live. In. I'm going to retire. <laughs> I hope. T- uh, can I just say? I hope Tim doesn't inherit a load of money because I hate him. <laughs> right. Um, she freezes yeah. when Stephen walks past, but Tim says, just ignore him. And Stephen's walking towards the cabin with his bag of lovely kebab when Tim's phone starts ringing. And it's he's the got birdie it back song. from the shop now, which is a weird little delaying tactic. I don't know why they wrote in that this is what... Um, what's the name? Uh-huh. Who put this on his phone? Steve. Steve, why do they put that in? Because this is the sort of thing that Tim would put on his own phone, <laughs> thinking that he's funny. I, apparently, um, I read people saying that the subtitle said it was Agadu. It's so not clearly Agadu. the subtitle doesn't know classic 90s we, see, listen, dis- school disco classic. We've been roundly criticised, and perhaps rightly so, for not knowing any songs. But we know, know God, the, we know the difference between Agadu and the Birdie yeah. song, and that's all you need to know. So anyway, there's very dramatic editing at that final scene, <laughs> isn't there? <laughs> Dolly Zoom, yeah. flashback to the canal from two weeks ago, massive sound effects, boom, 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 end of episode, and, no and, trailer for next one. And some people thinking... God, he really likes the birdie song. (laughs) (laughs) Stephen's like, Tim, you must tell me. I know we we hate each other, but where did you get that awesome ringtone from? I really, I really just want to really hope I like next week's Coronation Street. There's been too much. Build up. No, 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 there's that. But there's been too many things that have just been, oh, what a coincidence. And the whole, you know, Tim happening to be at the canal fortnight ago is the biggest one of all. But him also, Stephen also being there to overhear Tim's phone call. Stephen happening to be there while Carla and Swain are talking on the street. All this stuff. It Carla really, happening yeah, to piece together not, exactly what happened. It's not it's driven not by quite, the characters. It's just not quite clever enough for me. I'm sorry. It's not driven by the characters enough for this to be satisfying no, to me. No, it's just, it's, it's very much a, well, and then this happens, and then this happens, and then like, this happens, you know, because someone happens to be there. A criti- criticised, um, criticised sort of Pat Phelan's ending, but the reason he came back to the street was that Gary kidnapped him. Hmm. And and that was a character driven choice, wasn't it? That that brought him to the street. He didn't just the happen to be there. He didn't go. Oh, I just I just came back on that day, and it happens to be Michelle's wedding, hmm. and and my daughter's pregnant, and I didn't yeah. know. Yeah, and uh, yeah. yeah, there's too, there's too many like they, the thing is they've had over a year for this storyline to to play out because you know his first kill was back in. Well, it was about almost a year ago, wasn't yeah. it? It was two episode week last year. Okay. They've they've planned it for longer than a year though. Yeah. Um it just doesn't feel very elegant and there are so many characters involved that have got very specific character personality traits, etc. And I think I uh, Carla's acting Carlos makes sense. I think the characters are acting the, the way that they would yeah, act. Yeah, I guess you're right. But, but I, I just feel like, yeah, you're right. It's too many too many coincidences and it just so happens that. Mm. And I know that this isn't a proper serious serial killer. It's it's not the... This is the trouble with Corey is that they're not... A, a, it's not a murder mystery show. The, the, the Richard Hillman one was done spectacularly well. I very much enjoyed the Pat Phelan one. I thought that, that that because that character was so, so deep and they played into that. And yeah, it got a bit over the top at times. But the, the whole thing of this Stephen storyline is it has been a bit campy and over the top. And, and I've like bought that. into that. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. It, it hasn't... I, don't, you know, I don't want to criticise it too much before it comes to its um, conclusion, but... It, yeah, I... they're, they're in danger of fl- fumbling a little bit here when that they it d- does feel like they're not. Yeah, it's campy and silly, but we've all bought in. Like you said, we've bought into that. So let's have a proper campy, silly ending, not just. I want them. I want them to be serious stuff. I don't. I don't know what I want for next. And week. also, Part I don't know how. I don't really know how close 
Stephen is to his end. I don't know what will happen to Stephen. I don't know if he's going to die or if he's going to go to prison or if he's going to escape. It'd be so refreshing if he escaped or if he went to prison. There's literally been so few Coronation Street big, big villains that haven't ended up dead. Yeah. I'd quite like it as a change. Yeah, I would like... But I think you he know, is going to die. I say that about every... I say that about I, I think... I think it would be too much of a temptation to have him Definitely. die in a ridiculous way. I mean, look, <laughs> Leo fell in a bin. <clears throat> Teddy had a hole punch to the head. Rufus, okay, his was his was Rufus cool drowned, and that's not funny. Um, no, not at all. But I think that Stephen ending up in a bin himself or something, something along Some those lines. Some poetic justice. It, it would be very much deserved, but I don't know. Anyway. I, I want there to be like, you know... Something with Audrey. I want there to be something with Gail. Gail has been pretty much absent for the whole of this, despite being the sister of the serial killer. And you'd be forgiven for forgetting that they were even related. And uh, is it, uh, on the one hand, maybe that's for the best, because Gail is not in her prime at the moment, the character. Um, but on the other hand, I'd love this to have been an opportunity for some real proper serious Gail stuff. And almost makes me feel like, What's going to happen is Stephen's going to get caught. Gail's like, oh, I like Thailand. I've been there before. Can I have your tickets? I'm going to go over there so I don't have to be involved in any of the fallout. Not that she's been in... Oh, I don't know. Anyway. Um, what? I was saying, I don't want him to die without killing somebody or, or leaving. I don't know what's <sighs> going to... I don't know what the future holds for really... him and what's going to happen to him, but I want him to kill again. And I, I really it need needs him. to be... I need that to it be It needs to be a significant week. character. Now, I have... Um, done a little Facebook, uh, sorry, t- uh, X poll, <laughs> um, to see what everybody thought based on some... Really, we've, the, 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 the candidates we've got here are Elaine, late contender, Tim, Sarah Lou, um, possibly Audrey, possibly Carla, um, Michael, Peter. Right, so I've, I put four candidates on there. Tim, Elaine, Carla and Peter, but I acknowledge there are more. Mm. Um, that They have released an image for this. I don't know if saying who's on the picture is going to spoil it. But I think we won't do that. No, but, we won't you do. Know, so, it's the characters so, that you would expect relate compared to who we've just been talking about. On my about. poll, Tim got 37%, Elaine got 31%, Peter got 27% and Carla got 5%. I think I would agree that Carla is the least He's likely... likely. You know, does that mean that she will? No, I don't um, think. I think well, I would rank- also maybe, maybe added Michael, Audrey, and Sarah to that possible I list. You said, was Sarah not on the list? No, I you said Sarah. Oh, I think that she's Tim, still Elaine, there. Peter, and Carla. Yeah, no, I mean Elaine. If Elaine comes back, I think that she's. Well, no, sorry, Elaine has come back. I think that that puts her very, very likely. But it's oh. also would be to me the most disappointing one. Because we've yeah. been speculating about who it can be, and it's like, hello, I'm back. It's I... like she's jumping in the line of fire. It, Another yeah, part, and, here's and a wild card Gabrielle. Yeah, I, I think that Gabrielle, I think the she escapes. The fact that she's not been brought up or mentioned or teased or she... appeared for a while makes me think that maybe she is just going to turn up and die. It would be a nice surprise if somebody unexpected was killed. Because um, if about... it's going to be anyone, it's going to be one of these people, I would say. The but if it's is... someone else, it'd be fun. But I don't. I, but then it'd be also just Ooh. like, oh, it's just Gabrielle. Here's That's something. not that big. Who cares? Here's something. Um, Gabrielle and Elaine both have similar hair, but different colours. If Elaine decides mm. to dye her wig black, <laughs> maybe she might become a, a cropper. I, I really want. I don't think can I that just, they're going to re- be mistaken. No, I know, but other, I w- like Carla and Natasha. I mean, uh, Leanne and Natasha. But I really want there to be a mistaken identity murder. I don't know why I've latched no. onto this idea. I don't need how, that. No, okay. Two how about since we had that. somebody? Somebody he kills somebody thinking it's Sarah, and she sees him doing it and realizes that she can't trust him, and then she. Ah. Okay. Okay. So if he does kill someone can i just say i bet you the writers have had this discussion i would I have loved to have sat listening to them coming up with all these ideas for how they're gonna I finish the storyline if he does no but the thing is i would have thought that <laughs> yeah. their decision on who steven's going to kill if there is someone is could well be based on an actor saying i'm leaving i don't mind so the decision's me. made for them really. yeah i know but they but, need to not do that they need to yeah I'm, i know it's not fair um, but they I need, they need... I, was, I completely forgot what i was going to say now um, if he's going you, to kill somebody, I hope he is. I did interrupt myself with something else. Um, 
No, it's going to be... Oh, no, I need it to be... I'd like it to be another accidental. Because although he did plot to to bump off Rufus, and that was superbly done with the whole... Didn't he? Bom, 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 yeah, bom, yeah. Bom. He, it, it wasn't with the rest. And and I think it would be more inviting with him, like with John Stape, if he accidentally kills someone. Whoops. And I still am going to say the biggest, like, oh, my gosh, you've accidentally killed X Sarah. would be Sarah. Yeah. Yeah. And I haven't got anything more to add to it than I did a couple of weeks ago, apart from the fact that we did have that scene in the factory the other day with her being suspicious of him. And, you know, maybe he just wants to... I don't think... I don't believe that he would purposefully kill his own niece. <sighs> maybe they get into a struggle. You know, maybe maybe she, she says she's going to tell somebody and he, he tries to sort of run in front of her and... I, I Yeah, I don't know, but... <sighs> I. Th- I think that that's the person I'd most like it to be. Yet she's my favourite character. I think out of all of the this is the suspect. Thing. So of this course I why, don't want it to be her. You know, to point this out, this is why Richard Hillman is still Corey's most iconic killer. Even though I like Pat Phelan more, Richard Hillman wins because he killed Maxine Peacock. Mm. But the difference there is. People at the time, if you were keeping up with the stories, knew that um, Tracy Shaw wanted to leave the programme. Did they? With, yes, yes. So this wasn't shocking? No. But they w- did They did think he killed Emily, but he hadn't. I don't think people thought he actually was going to kill Emily. Um, I watched it at the time. I don't think I knew that, I don't that she was leaving. Um, I think there's layers... Right, I think Michael, it was, I think it was there's layers of, of people who are more into the show than others and Coronation Street is very difficult for them to make the show for everybody yeah. and and they're not necessarily making it for us mm. the hardcore fans that that know everything and all the gossip and behind the scenes stuff yeah um there, there is a bit of a elephant in the room that I don't really want to go into because maybe it's spoiler territory about somebody no I'm not even going to say I don't want to go down there well but... okay that well there is <laughs> okay there's more than but, one even quite quite possibly but, but we don't know <laughs> we don't know anything oh i really well i really hope it's not them because it's like oh yeah well we knew that they were no hang on let's not let's, no, not let's not even go there okay so i want it but, to be sarah the most just for the sheer shock value but i but i think she's fantastic i think that she's i'd like to think she's quite high on the probability list i do not think that Tim is going to be killed by Stephen. No. I don't believe for a second that's going to happen. Watch brilliant. me eat my words this time next week. That would be oh, this Gemma time would, next week. We're gonna... Gemma would be so happy with it. I think that he's too big a character. Um, I'm so excited. I think. I think obviously with the big oh, twist at the not the twist, horrid. the big cliffhanger at the end of Wednesday's episode made it look like Tim was in the most danger. Tim realizes that he knows that he likes to frequent and poke canals so therefore we're going to be at some point next week thinking that tim is for the chop but i think kill him then they're going to pull the rug from underneath us and say no tim's actually okay and then there'll be another victim what if he kills sally no no obviously that's not going to happen sally's not going to die all right Um, all right i think i think michael it could be but then I don't think that that's going to be big enough. I, I'd be kind of sad if Michael went, but I think, I think we would think be many people. Yeah. would be would be crying too many, shedding too many tears over Which that. Which is a shame. So I don't think it's him because I really like Michael. Um, it, like, that would be a letdown yeah. if it was. Um, Peter would be huge, oh. um, and not be on the rounds of possibility oh. because Chris Gascoigne has been in and out of the program over the years. Well, he's not maybe coming back is if out, he gets Maybe murdered. this is out for the last time. Oh. I suppose Carla has as well, but I, I, I think she's safe. I've just got... Uh, it's just... A, uh, Jenny, Jenny's going to be fine. I'm not worried about her. Um, I just can't... I can't get away. I, I would say the two most likely in my head are... Um, Elaine and Sarah. What about Gabrielle? No, no, think I, Gabrielle. I think I think she's you fine. Think she's I think I think back. they would know that that would be too big a letdown and a waste of time if it was Gabrielle. So I'm going to say Sarah Lou and Gabrielle. No, Sarah Lou and Elaine are the most likely. I thought I'd like to see the last of Elaine. I think it would be a letdown if it was her. So my money's, my hope is still on Sarah. No, I don't want Sarah to leave. 
I know. Whoever who did you it? say the most likely? I don't know. I did. What? Who? What did I say? You haven't said. Oh, I didn't. Um. I mean, the thing is, with all this, we don't even know if he's going to kill somebody. I think the most if disappointing thing somebody, at all would be if he doesn't kill somebody. I'm going to write a letter. I actually will write a letter. I will. It's been I'll too long since the last one. I've got like yeah, Who cards. do you think is the most likely? Um, who's the... See, this is one of those things where you say one person, and then when you finally get to see what happens, you're like, yeah, I knew that all along. I know, I, I know. That's why I've, you know, I've put my... Put my head above the parapet here and I I'm going to say this is who I'm saying and I'm going to eat my words next week because I'm never right with very many of my predictions Peter are you going to say Peter I don't you? want it to happen as a surprise exit that would be that would cause ripples it's a barlow I would, but the thing is I don't I wouldn't that would make that would be sad I think that'd just be sad like if I think if if Sarah died, I don't know. All of them, I think, apart See, from if, Gabrielle and If Peter Elaine, dies, then we get more of Carla wallowing, and I don't and really whining. want to see that. Wallowing and whining. Maybe sure. And more of Ryan yeah. and... Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't think the fallout of that would be fun. I mean, we get yeah. to see some probably very good Ken scenes. Um, oh, it might be Peter. a chance. For, in, we'll never hear him Would say Simon Peter show again. up for his dad's death? Do you just you know? tell him, go, where's my dad? Oh dear. And then go off again for another six months. I don't know. Um, but um, yeah, I think. I, I think, don't know. I don't want him to kill anybody, but I do. I really want him to kill somebody. Um, yeah, I, I do. think. Who would I want? I've got I, a feeling I that. Want it, I would love it to be Tim, but I also don't want everyone to be mad at me. Because you might, might put it because out into I'll the universe and it happened. No, I, I think Tim's safe. I think he will be in mortal peril, but not not not. Killed. He might get a bit slapped about. Um, and Aud- he's not going to kill Audrey, but um, yes, I, I don't think he killed so. Audrey. I mean, oh. They could, they could. Oh. Maybe she's not the completely low down on my list, but I, d- I don't think that'd be made. <laughs> just imagine that. But the thing is, but, but no, will Stephen you... be dead by the end this time next week? Oh, I, I think it's. I think it no, could be. I no. I do think it could be. No, I want him to do what Richard Hillman and Pat Phelan did and sort of run off and come back at Christmas. This is my hope. Mm. He kills somebody boring, like like I Elaine mean. on next week. <laughs> sorry, Elaine. sorry, Elaine. I'm we really both say sorry. you're boring, but you, <laughs> um, know, you know, kills Elaine still... on Friday. Uh, you know, and Tim's there. Like Tim, Tim and uh, Stephen have a battle on 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 Friday, and Elaine's like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa I've just turned up for no reason." Whoa. And <laughs> sorry, sorry, I'm in the way of your knife. <laughs> Dies, and then he, and then Stephen runs off to Thailand, and then he remembers at Christmas he's left all his presents at home. <laughs> he has to come back and get them. <laughs> then he comes back and confronts everybody at Christmas and then something... Well, you know, we ha- I, I was very overjoyed this week on social media to find out that director Matt Hilton is doing the Christmas episodes this year. He is, he's back. He is back I know, this week. I knew he was back, but I didn't know he was doing Christmas. He is, Matt is doing Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. Yeah, so hopefully that's going to be good. What a jolly time we'll have. We must, must, like this is usually, by this time, usually finishing Street Talk and we've managed to fit in two stories so far. But these are massive stories and we're coming up to a massive week, so yeah. it's not really surprising, but okay, we'll launch in, you can read. So this, this is the Mix Mishy Monday Miss Match Mitch match of stories Mitch match. that basically boil down to Mason stole the car that hit Eliza and it was Tyrone's car. But let's, you know, for the, give them their juice and say what happened. What an so. unremarkably interesting, uninteresting story. <laughs> Tell me about it. So, starts off on Monday. Liam's walk into the bus stop with mate Dylan and apparent mate Mason, who makes fun of him for having an inhaler. Did Liam have asthma before this? I'm not going to say no, he definitely didn't. I'm going to say I don't remember because I don't really care about Liam, but it's quite possible, but also quite You're possible also that they made it too up much just for this. detail if you want to get through this so, quickly. So, Cassie, meanwhile, is um, getting ready for this meeting at the garage and she's having a pre-meeting meeting. meeting. I don't know. Was it with the, with the charity lady, maybe? Well, they want... Oh, yeah. They, she owns a business that does taxis and they yeah, want blah, to blah, service blah, blah, all blah. the taxis. So Tyrone tries is trying to be kind of tactful and telling Cassie, look, I'm happy for you to be there for the experience, but maybe you need to be quiet. And Abby's like, yeah, keep your gob shut, which is a bit... I didn't really like her a being blunt. a bit too blunt about that. Cassie storms off as she is wants to do. Stu, meanwhile, is busy in the kitchen preparing a lovely pasta meal for Yasmeel, 
Yasmin <laughs> to come home to um, after her trip away in Pakistan. But she's he's a bit mm, worried because there. he hasn't told her that Eliza is staying with Dom. Well, Yasmin comes back later. She's like, all right, it's me, Param Yasmin, back in Coronation Street. I've visited my mother's grave and I've made peace with her. And, start, and um, while they're there, Stu cops a look at Tyrone's car. Coincidentally, across the street, it's like, eh, that looks like the car that hit Eliza. Man. And also, where's its ring mirror? Where's the ring mirror gone? <laughs> Um, anyway, um, a cop comes and visits Tyrone later <laughs> and says, um, your car was involved in a hit and run. <laughs> um, and <laughs> what? You just, you, you. My autocorrected note said, a car visits Tyrone and says his heart was involved in a hit and run. But I skillfully avoided reading <laughs> it's that. It's like your heart was really in it, it, but you weren't actually there. <laughs> so we don't know whether to charge you. So then you got Mason. Mason, by the way, if you hadn't known before, is the dodgy teen we've seen hanging around at the precinct and the street corner a couple of times in the past month. You'll recognise him because he looks about 10 foot tall. <laughs> he's looking like he's wearing eyeliner and his hair is just a little bit too long over his eyes um and well, that's the fashion yeah um so anyway he he is um he sees this police car looking at tyrone's car on the street and he does a run up with liam and dylan they Back just to run them later they just run like you know that you know what happens geese. so tyrone's in the police station being interviewed later <laughs> about why your car was involved in a hit and running he kind of taking it quite you know going, oh yeah of course yeah maybe it was my nana <laughs> But he's like, no, your car was involved in a hit and run. This is a serious story, Tyrone. And it's like, it was so an annoying back, child, but He goes back to the cafe illegal. and finds Cassie and Evelyn. And he's pretty narc now about being accused of this. And he says, look, he, the police have been asking me if anyone else had access to the car. Mm-hmm, Mum. And Roy comes over and says, saves the day by saying, no, oh, Cassie this was, wasn't this in the was, car because I remember... This was awful. Oh, this was, wasn't it? It was like... Oh, They're like, where were you on 9-11? <laughs> where were you on the September the 11th? It's well, like we were, it wasn't a car that we were, hit we were, the Twin Towers. We were all thinking ta- tactless things there, I'm sure. Yes. Um, but apparently the, the Dobbs... Cassie did 9-11. The Dobbs plumber household were all in the cafe having an argument about something. And Roy says, I remember it because it was the anniversary of the Twin Towers. Um, um, that was really... Uh, yeah, it was just like... Well, something, wasn't it? It was, it was something. Uh, maybe yeah. unavoidable. Let's move on. Um, <laughs> Mason, in the Victoria Gardens later, confesses to Dylan and Liam that he was the one what stole Tyrone's car and he maybe had a little bump with a girl Did in it. Did he say that he ran her over? Because I, I like think, him more. I think he said that I just, I just kind of scraped her I couldn't her see through the vape smoke. Yeah, he, he, he kind of admits it. And... Um, mm. Don't tell anyone, guys, because you'd be a grass. Yeah. So um, they, they then talk about bunking off school tomorrow so they can have a bit of a vaping sesh. <laughs> um, the vapes don't come out on Monday, I don't No, they? they don't. Tyrone and Evelyn go home. He's like, oh, no, where's mum? Evelyn's like, who cares? She's probably going to be fine. And Kevin finds her downing a can of lager in Victoria Gardens. The teens have vacated and she starts opening up about what happened um, and how up in the cafe earlier, how Tyrone doesn't believe her, and she also gets a little bit, a little bit leery with Kev, doesn't she? There was maybe seeds planted of um, you mean Cassie's going to maybe make a pass off. at Kevin at some point, but because he's been kind and taking care of her, it's like oh, I don't really need to see that. Are we going to have Abby versus Cassie? Oh, I don't. It's not the most thrilling well, of stories. I mean, Kev's got a type then. Skank. Uh, blonde ex-drug addict. <laughs> it's a nice way of putting it. Mm. I, don't, I don't need that, but it looks like it's, that's happening. I, the story... I was really, really loving the story up until the last time the block ended, when it was all about the relationship and the dynamics between Cassie oh, and Evelyn. Oh, Cassie and Evelyn were brilliant, and now and now it's, yeah, it's, it's kind of di- diluted a bit too much. It, it is, and then it's not in it as much. They're just popping in for the odd scene here. It's, I'll tell you what it is. It's all, it's all politics at the, at the garage... Oh, who's I just, who's got the keys? Cassie's and... coming across as unlikable, and Claire Sweeney's doing a very, very good job at being unlikable. But I'm almost. And are we going to get the contract? Going... I don't care about whether no, businesses care about win that. a contract. Um. Anyway. Um. 
Oh, I've got a note here from a different story. <clears throat> I'll remember that later on. Back in the flat, Gary um, is trying to ask who this new character is that was making fun of your inhaler earlier <laughs> on today, son. They cast a new thug. Have they cast somebody? Because I was is the Is there thug. a new troubled teen on the block? Because um, I need to do his <clears throat> induction for I was once him. I need to ask him when Weatherfield County was formed. Indeed. And Liam says, no, he's fine. He's just a joke. Um, I don't care that he was making fun of my asthma. Over at number six, Stu's updating Yasmin about the whole car situation. And he's like, oh, yeah, it was definitely Ty- Tyrone's car that hit Eliza, but we don't know who was driving. Never mind, eh? Says it's Yasmin. Because there's an absolute, complete lack of any kind of urgency or interest in in the idea that somebody might have there done it There was a bit. Her. What's much more important so. was that Dom's coming round for tea tomorrow. They don't... They're like, what, should we cook Dom for tea? Yeah. But this is when Stu says to Yasmin... Dom's actually a bit of a wrong end because he tried to buy Eliza. No, was it the other round? Sell Eliza. Sell. I, I, always, sell get, I always get those two mixed up. That's why I'd never, you never see me down the stock exchange. <laughs> so, um, end of the episode. Kevin gives Cassie a kebab. He says, come and stay at number 13 because Abby is very helpfully standing, staying at Wendy Papadopoulos' house for, for the night reason. with Elfie. Remember him? It's going to be I fine. Hate, he's like, I hate and that And she kid. says, yes, please. <laughs> And then we get to Tuesday when the storylines kind of separate out. I hope that Wendy's looking after that precious baby, mm. spawn of Imran. Well, she's back after a day, isn't she? So maybe she doesn't do that. Abby good is. Job. Yeah. Right, vape alarm, Gemma. Talk oh, am teens. I doing this? this is an, Yeah, you are doing this one. I thought you were going to do all of them. No. All the mix together. I've actually got thoughts about this. All right. Oh, do you? Oh, yeah. I talk. Yeah. Yeah. You what? Yeah. On Tuesday, I have feelings about teens and vapes. <coughs> I think it's great. I think they should do more <laughs> of it. Liam is rejecting Gary's offer of a lift to school and Sean finds them all at the bus stop and they haven't left yet and they make some excuses because they're... What a bunch of donuts. They're, they're planning bunking off but they go to the... They wear their uniform at the bus stop. Yeah. They're not very good at hiding, are they? Anyway, they go off to the precinct to start vaping. And Liam's like, oh, I don't really like it but I'm, I'm saving mine for later. It's not a donut. <laughs> I like, well, you like the word donut I do I've, your... I've gotten into donut word of the minute so um, Liam's like maybe I will have a lovely taste of this delicious vape <laughs> starts coughing splutter in has an immediate asthma attack so that everybody at home understands the dangers yeah, of, of tea vaping. vaping if you have asthma don't do it at the hospital later, Maria's, I love this, Maria's like, I can't believe I could, this is my laissez-faire approach to her parenting is not paying off. Why are you vaping You in your condition and skiving off school? Who gave you this vape? She's like, she's all set to march down the school, isn't she? For she's them like, not, why are they... Not ch- keeping better look on Why the are boys? they selling the vapes in the tuck shop? <laughs> Um, also, this is, you know, she's a counsellor. She can't have a kid. Very true. She's probably seen. just worried about her own... Um... What about my image? Yeah. You didn't think of that, did you, Liam? Yeah. Gary guesses it's this guy he was hanging around with and uh, Liam just confesses that it was Mason. And Gary, for some reason, knows all the scallywags and he's like, yeah, oh, I know. On the Paul Robeson estate. W- what's the name he's of probably his... Got, he probably I was knocking him. him up for... Um... Yeah. Uh, what's he, what's he going? Gra- load loan shark. I, lo- I loaned him a load of money so they could send their granny off to... Abitha yeah. to buy drugs. Um, yeah, they're they're badans. This, this the family. Just, Ooh. Oh, Maria storms around number eleven to have a go at Sean about Liam, and he hasn't obviously told Sean uh, that that he's done this. So this is a surprise to Sean, and she also tells Sean that she suspects it was Mason that gave everybody the vapes. And Mason's there with Dylan and they're both denying it. But Maria's like, I know, oh, you'll not get away with this. And I'll tell you what, she is tenacious. She gets the bin sorted out. She can get you sorted out. <laughs> so Dylan's in the doghouse. Maria gets home, tells Liam he's in big trouble. He's grounded for a whole month. This doesn't last because he's allowed to leave the house and also have visitors. I don't know what they think being no, they grounded did, they is. They bring it up. They just she and Gary up. say, right, they stay away from Mason. Carry through and then Maria. Liam gets a text message saying... Snitches get stitches. I thought kids these days would have had different, more imaginative and interesting way of no. doing that. But no, we haven't moved on <laughs> from that. On Wednesday, Liam's pretending he's ill so he doesn't have to go to school because he's scared of those stitches that he was warned about. <laughs> and they're sceptical, but they let him They let him off. He's supposed to be grounded and they're letting him bunk off. Yeah. These two are idiots. <laughs> Dylan and Mason meet up in the cafe. Well, he says, oh, I still... It's because of my asthma attack the other day. I'm still... <gasps> Still can't breathe very well. 
Mason says Liam's a weasel, and I can't believe I didn't say he's a weasel. Like, weasel. A weasel. A weasel. The girl is wheezing that he's doing. Yeah. Um, and he says he's going to get him if he blabs on us. And Liam's not happy about this. No, Dylan would be the one that wasn't happy about that. Yes. Mason and the other tall teens all make fun of Dylan for having a gay dad in the precinct, which, <laughs> what a bunch of <laughs> arseholes they were. I know. It was, um... Yeah, they, they really ripped into him, didn't they? And uh, Dylan, Dylan, you know, why is Dylan hanging around with these people anyway? They, they've just heard that Sean's not a very popular character. They're just they're just joining in with all like, the other Sean bashing. Yeah, that D- goes D- on. Dylan's like, yeah, make fun of him for being gay. I'm just glad you didn't bring up that everyone hates him and thinks he's the worst. I'm going to stand up and say again, I thought that Anthony Cotton did a good job this week, and I have been consistently yeah. positive I'm... about the character of Sean since the beginning of this podcast. That's my you unpopular opinion. I think Sean is a great character. I really enjoy him. Um, Anthony I think, Cotton's. I think he's funny, um, and I think that, and I really loved the scene. Was it that episode? I can't remember. Later on, when Sean tears a strip off of Dylan, and and has to act as a as a telly offy dad. I think he did a great job. He's off feed the telly. I don't I don't yeah. care if nobody else agrees with me. I like Sean. Good for you. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Mason tells Dylan he wants to get some booze from the pub to take to the party uh, that night. And then Sean comes along and says, Dylan, get home. You're grounded. And Mason's laughing at him as Dylan gets taken off. And Sean has to go at Dylan. Yeah, this is the, this is the scene I really liked. When they get home and says, Mason's bad news. He doesn't care about you. He's leading you astray. And Dylan storms out of the house. He kind of brings up the fact that I've, I've looking after you here. You're having such a terrible time in London. That's why you're living with me now and you never, ever see your mum. Yeah. I kind of abducted you. And you're, you've been a character in this programme for, what, three years now? And you've, I've been so protective a father of you this past three years. Yeah. Not even let you have a storyline. And now look at and you. Now, You're yeah. right in the middle of a teen vaping storyline. Yeah, so I take ashamed. my eye off the ball just for a minute because my because of the drama, of the at, work. drama at work at the pub. I'm unemployed. And the next minute you're vaping. And at now you're from a broken home. <laughs> and now you're vaping. <laughs> right. So D- Dylan storms off and shows up at Gary and Maria's house. They're not very happy to see him after everything that's happened, but they let him let him see Liam. And Liam and, and Dylan have a little chat and Liam tells Dylan he doesn't want to be Mason's mate anymore. And Dylan says, I don't like you, you're a loser. <laughs> and then leaves. What a dick. There's, what? They've had, they, <laughs> Dylan has had, I mean, he didn't have much of a personality to begin with because they wouldn't use him. But generally, I would say, Dylan's come across as a pretty likeable character He's come across this as point. quite mature and, and, and so kind of got his head screwed on. Yeah. And now he's just lost his mind he's because Mason's batted his eyelid, eyelashes at him. Yeah, he has. He's given, given him, him a face. flutter, hasn't he? Yeah. Um, I, I think that it's going to turn out in the end that, I mean, obviously... But honestly... D- Dylan, Dylan is going along with Mason because he wants look, to be cool. Yeah, but also... He's going to be fine in the end. They can smell the blood in the water, the kids, can't they? Liam oh, yeah. is the weakest one. He's the one the wildebeest he's the wildebeest that the lion's gonna eat yeah yeah he's the one that can't even vape without going to hospital <laughs> why would you want to be his friend when you can be mason's friend yeah mason you gotta could... think about it yeah i i, <laughs> I, I don't I, I i find the the dynamics between these three just kind of unbelievable because of how massively much older than the other two Mason looks like why is this guy hanging around with them how old is he supposed to be is he supposed to be their age because he's clearly not and if you the well, guy Liam, who plays Liam and, him and Liam Mason and, look Dylan bridges the gap I think but yeah if you the, just the, take the, Liam the, and Mason g- together the, the gas the, the gorge in between D- Li- Liam and Mason it, it's honestly it's ridiculous it's it's like Jack isn't it but but yeah, the guy that plays Mason, who's an actor called Luca Tulin, he's nineteen. <gasps> um, Liam, on the other hand, the character of Liam is fourteen, and I'm pretty sure that the kid who plays Liam is fourteen as well. Dylan's supposed to be fifteen, but only just, and I think the person who plays Dylan is sixteen. So there's even a, there is a three year age gap between is it Liam who Liam McShane who plays Dylan and Luca Tulin, and they just. Seeing Dylan, them sitting at the bus stop or whatever together. Do you not think Dylan and and Mason look more close? No, in age. I think he looks huge. He's I'm a giant compared to them. With children. It just doesn't look right that they're friends together. Like, why would somebody no, can like? I, but okay. And but, I know you get tall teenagers. Yeah, I know. But can I say 
that there are definitely a, a subset of loser kids who are unable to make friends in their own group of peers who then befriend younger people because they are cooler mm. and it's easier for them to manipulate the younger ones. Yeah, and, I mean, but it normally happens with like older boys and younger girls. Mm. But I mean, clearly, clearly Mason is not supposed to be 19 because he's still going to school and he's still got his uniform maybe on. He's so we got to knock back. a few years off of that. Um, so he's going to be 16 at, at least. But I think he's supposed to be 14 and 15 like the rest of them and it just doesn't well, work. Well, it makes you wonder why they've they've hired this actor who's nine. he's 19. Well, yeah. Whenever they hire an actor who's over the age of 18, it always sets off alarm bells in my head that there's something is there gonna unsavoury be... that they couldn't get a child to do. Yeah, almost certainly. Mason but is also, going to be doing a lot worse than vaping. There's the also stuff to consider the fact that um, they, they can spend more time on set. And the other thing mm, too mm. is that if they do want to go down this path more with him being a joyrider, he maybe can actually drive. Yeah. Whereas quite. I don't think that I don't, I don't think Dylan and Liam no, uh, can. No. Um, I, I, I'm reserving judgment on Mason because it was only his first proper week this week. But he's, I think he's we're a, supposed to not like him. I, I, yeah, but he's a bit of a Callum Logan, isn't he? He's, he's a little bit on the um, little bit on the camp side. I, I find. Is I that... hate his silly pockets. What? His little That's nipple what... pockets. He's got the, like like the same as um as uh, uh Peter used to have a little kind of. I haven't been. Sh- why has he got these little thunder? He's got a stupid thunderbird. Area. He's got a stupid little thunderbird yeah. jacket on with two little flappy pockets right on his chest. It I, just looks dorky. I just I I'm finding you're a dork, Mason. I'm finding his portrayal to be you. just a little bit camp at the moment, and I don't know whether it's supposed. I to think be. I think it's in the grand tradition of Corey villains to be a little bit camp. Oh uh, yeah, I, I know. We'll, we don't we'll want see. them to be really menacing, I, do we? I, I'm not overjoyed at the idea of these together because Dylan I'd like to like honestly because I think that the character the actor who plays him is actually really really good I also kind of like the fact that he was just a little baby when he was in Coronation Street at first or toddler maybe um Liam I don't I wouldn't care if he just got taken up in the raptor and we never saw him again <laughs> so the fact that there's a story with him and it's like oh, I'm not too thrilled but I'm also kind of thinking long term these are like the next lot of Corrie That's teams, what I was aren't thinking. they? And we do know, Eliza we really, really know that Ian McLeod likes Hope. to get the teens in in all the stories. So yeah, next, well, fast, the over the group. next few years, are we going to be seeing just as much of these lot as we have yeah, been seeing in five Summer years. And, 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 and uh, Amy and Asher and everything? I don't know. I, they just, to me, don't quite feel strong enough for characters. Whereas you get, well, I suppose Jack could well be involved with this lot as well when he eventually um, deigns to make a entrance. Appearance. Um, I would say that the stronger characters at the moment are Sam and Hope and Maybe Ruby, I don't but know. They're but they're too young for this. They're too young for this sort of thing, yeah. So I don't know. I'm I'm cautious with this at the moment. But I am when when um Luca's casting was announced a month or so ago, maybe on it on social media, and they said that he was gonna have a storyline with Dylan, I, w- I am really, really thrilled that Dylan is getting a story. I've been waiting for this. I I want to see whether I like him or not initial impressions are yes so I'm even though he's, a, he's been a, a nasty boy yeah I know that's what's that's what's made it a bit disappointing to me that he's been a bit of a bad lad but I think he's being led astray and he'll go back to being a bit nicer because I'd, I'd like to see more of the I dynamics think he's got a between good heart. him and Sean yeah exactly and Sean really has got a good heart I, yes. I know he's a massive gossip but he's but that's he is okay. good and he's a bit of a lech and Sure. Oh yeah, he was a bit with Ryan. After Ryan, he, isn't he? Yeah, I'd like to see more of that relationship. But yeah, no. I, what I want to kind of talk a little bit about oh. is this whole vaping thing. Oh dear. I do, do. you remember we were in the shop the other week and I had a massive, well, a bit of a rant you to you about vaping, and you were like, "That's the first time I've ever seen you." You have literally op- never opinions about anything. Op- you. It's not that political, is it? I, well, all right. What? What should I? Yeah, you've never I just, offered your opinion about anything to me ever. No, I really, really. But you suddenly turned to me and you were like, "I really don't like how clearly aimed towards children yeah. these vapes are." Yeah. And I, I, I've got nothing original to say about it. No. But I honestly, truly think that they are massively preying on children. Yeah. 
we, we don't have cigarettes on display in uh, in the shops now, which is great. But these have replaced them, and they're even more garish, even more alluring and attractive, and saying, "Come and buy me." All the flavors that they have, all, all the, the bright colors, colors they are so Cheap. so clearly and flagrantly and blatantly and unashamedly yep. trying to ensnare a new young audience that was lost when cigarette smoking was on the decline. But it's not just that. It's all the children who probably wouldn't have smoked in before, or a lot of the children who wouldn't have smoked before, are now taking these up because they're seemingly harmless. Well, they're not. They're not. Oh my God. The, the, I, I it's, it's very early to find out what the risks are, but they, they're still got nicotine you don't want to be in. They're still addictive. Stuff you, you, in that you no, don't and know what it is, really. I think that I think the fact that you know people like your mum have stopped smoking to take up um, e-cigarettes. That's great. I'd rather she was that she was smoking her e-cigarette than a natural cigarette. But the fact that it has become the cool thing to be sucking on the streets is really, <laughs> really shameful so for society. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I can't believe that the government <laughs> is being so slow to do something about it. It feels like At such an easy least, thing to they do. Could say, you are not allowed to advertise these well, like they... they're sweets, which is basically what they are in the shops at the moment. My my problem is the disposable ones because it's a massive waste of resources and yeah, I mean, toxic let, chemicals. Even that. Um, I think they 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 did that rule about limits for the the refills, hmm. which I think didn't actually solve any problems. It just made everything slightly worse. It just seems like a very, you know, the government's saying all these crazy things about and, and scrapping HS2, which I am furious about. I think it's disgusting. What, why are they doing all this when they all they have to do is say, right, vapes, you can't have the brand name on it and you can't, it can't be a colour and it can't be a flavour. And you can't sell them. It's already banned. Hide them in the shops, for heaven's sake. I mean, we don't, we don't use vapes, so it wouldn't affect me, but it does feel a bit like... The, these elements are what is attracting children, and I don't think that as a society we to want cool. and they're advertised. that to happen. I, I, just for I, the future health of people. But again, it's none of my, my business. When you get to an age where you're allowed to have them, that's fine. But like, like we know somebody whose relative, about five or six years ago, explicit her explicit job was to market vapes to children that was she was employed by a vape company and and she it wasn't a secret i mean they didn't write it down on a bit of paper or anything but she knew that was her job and i don't know as far as i can see she and her colleagues have done an incredible job very good job i the the advertising as well stop it it it, it, (laughs) i'm gonna say something that's really bad here but i used to find a lot of cigarette and cigar adverts actually really quite clever and they were funny and well, there's a series of them and I can't remember what it was now because it was a very long time ago it was what 15 years maybe since they stopped advertising them but there was a series of them that was like I imagine the billboard like split diagonally in half and on one half there was a guy and then the other half there was a butler or something and they were, and they had speech bubbles coming out of them and they said quite funny things back and forth and I always used to find it is it fence and hedges I don't know butler, and I used yeah. to I used to get really excited when a new one of those billboards came up. It didn't make me want to smoke, but I used to think that they were great. But I completely stand by the fact that that, that kind of advertising should be banned. And this... It, oh. Well, listen, you know what I said, the, you know, what I said, so, about, oh my God, what I said about banning the flavours and the, and the colours and the brand names... That's not necessarily what I think, but that is, if I, if you asked me, how do you stop children from finding this attractive? Those are such easy, simple ways to think, how would I, don't, just those three things alone, make them, put more tax on them. It, it, just it feels, feels like there are lots of things you could do that aren't being done. And the results are that the amount of children who are doing this, like you say, and you, you've got okay. a different perspective than a lot of people because you're a teacher I don't know what the situation is we with might, you, but the, 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 I don't imagine you have many school. children. No. But no, you know, for, but you go, you've gone into the the sort of sphere of education because you care. Yeah, but about but I, I, it's ra- it is absolutely rampant in in secondary schools, but. Oh, I, I, it just it, feels to me like it's one of these things that in, I don't know, 50, 100 years or whatever time, we're going to look back and go, <clears> how did they not see this happening? What a massive mess up this was. This is the most ridiculous thing. I can't believe that 
they were so blatantly allowed to do this. Well, I mean, if I just quickly Googled and I found a website, rcph.ac.uk. Uh, more than one in five 11 to 15 year olds have, have used vapes in 2000. So I would have thought it would be and, longer than, uh, more than that, to be honest. Um, oh, oh, no. So moving seven. away from that. About Do, to no, co- sorry, 2021. Okay. Um, in Coronation Street, I think that it's interesting that they're tackling the idea of children with vapes. But the problem is it doesn't feel like that's what the story is. The story is Mason's a big tough guy and Dylan wants to side with him and Liam's being sidelined and maybe Dylan's going to be forced to bully Liam. Uh, we've bullying storylines at school we've had them many times before. It's not going to be a story about selling vapes to children which actually I would prefer to see. Well, I saw some people criticising this and laughing at the idea that Liam would go to hospital immediately after having used a vape once. I don't don't, know. I don't know. I don't don't know. I've got my my thoughts about this and I don't really know a whole lot about them. It was believable enough for me. I I didn't really care. Um, Getting people addicted to anything is not... Is not great for them. Unless that thing is Coronation Street, in which case it's perfectly healthy. <laughs> but you know what suit. I mean. I'm just saying, like, if you can avoid being addicted to things, it's I would definitely recommend it. <laughs> um, it just makes life easier. Right, Gemma, I, I, I'm afraid to say that it uh, falls onto you to uh, do this the is why, storyline. This is why I was mad that you... that you, I thought you were going to read all these yourself, and no. then I would swoop in at the end. Yeah, and talk about fun. the Ardy storyline. Okay, no, right, go right. on. On Tuesday, Stu off... Oh, my God. <laughs> I just can't read this Who's story. Freddy again? Freddy the, oh, the dog. dog. Okay. This was weird. This was totally weird. What happened here? He's like, hey, Roy, I'm going to take your dog because Eliza might like... Oh, I've got a bit Scottish now. Oh, let me have your wee dog. <laughs> hey, your wee dog, eh? <laughs> sorry, everybody. I'm sorry to everybody. So, Stu takes Freddy for the day. Roy's got his hands full. Don't ask questions. Yasmin comes home later... And she sees that Stu's plan to use Freddy to win over Eliza and she tells him he, she can't manipulate her. She has to decide herself. So you then can't Freddy just buy is a dog. not in the story And anymore. then he just what kicks him, he just boots him outside. <laughs> yeah, she, like, he goes out of the orangery and punts him over the fence <laughs> in the direction of uh, Roy's rolls. Bless him. Don it's brings... not that far. You might be able to do it if he wound... I bet you he... could kick a dog from, from Yasmin's garden to, to Roy's at least rolls. over the fence. Yeah. Well, next time we go to the set, we'll try and we'll let see if they'll let us do it. <laughs> okay, Dom brings Eliza around, um, but she's only to pick up her stuff, and uh, and he's also tells them that he doesn't want Eliza to stay for tea anymore. Oh, no. So obviously, Stu's uh, d- bereft, and they have stern words together. And um, Eliza gives Stu a big hug and leaves with Dom. So Stu mopes in the orangery, going, "Oh, shan't kick that dog now because I ain't got any friends at all." <laughs> oh, I should have the dog to stroke. <laughs> he tells Jasmine that Dom was provoking him, provoking him, and honestly, Stu is just so easy to wind up. I know. Jasmine tells him he needs to make sure he stays in control of his temper because he doesn't want to risk pushing Eliza away, and she's sure that eventually Eliza will come back one day. Well, I mean, it's true. But as the week goes on, it seems it's so especially Wednesday. That Dom couldn't give less of a crap. Yeah, and and Eliza has kind of the shine has worn off of Dom, and because she sneaks to number six on Wednesday, doesn't she? So she's clearly working her way back to maybe wanting to go back to live with Gran and Granddad again. But Stu's like, no, oh, I'm going to get a private detective, like. Well, he makes a secret phone call to somebody to ta- get them to look more into what they discussed the other week. Secret, secret. On Wednesday, Yasmin is pleased to hear from Stu that Eliza's coming around later. So she does pop round and they offer her shepherd's pie for tea. And she's evasive when um, they ask her when Dom's picking her up. But it turns out she hasn't even told him she's there. And he swoops Shocked in. Shocked. And that. he's like moaning at them. And they're moaning at him. And then Stu goes off later and has a secret meeting with a secret private detective. I did write private dick originally and I changed not, that. It's a lady, it's so a lady. it can't be a private dick. No, it's a... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say what I said because it's far too coarse right. what a female private dick is called okay so he, he says get me dirt on this guy the end <laughs> when will we this end care. honestly this I don't end? why couldn't why couldn't Mason have run Eliza over and killed her <laughs> nobody cares that nobody nobody is bothered not even Eliza cares who, who's just, the person who the, the biggest, ran her over the biggest casualty in this is Yasmeen and Oh, like Yasmin was a huge, huge 
um, well, we really loved her for the first few years of the show and, and the Nazis as a whole weren't getting a whole lot of praise were they but no. we were like no we, they're, they're not bad actually and Yasmin is the best of the be- of the bunch and then she gets the wonderful storyline with, with Jeff um, and, and everybody came onto Yasmin's side and Shelley King was getting all the nominations for the best actress and so on and then just since that storyline the character has just been fed poor story after poor story if it's not like house sharing with Kathy and Elaine and being scared of a mouse it's now being paired up with this boring old git stew and it's not her f- oh I do- I'm just really sad for what's happened to Yasmin and I I'm perfectly willing to hope that there's going to be a good story with her in the future again and do you remember when, like, she used to be the wise woman of the street and she'd go around sa- dispensing sage advice and also when there were wrong on the street, she'd go up and she'd flip and well tell them? She'd do you remember? Do you remember? Face. She used to be like that. Do you remember when Rana was struggling with her sexuality and, and Yasmin took her into the orangery and... Love is of, love. Yeah, and we just... And, and now she's just a bit... I, Silly. She just doesn't have that depth anymore. Oh, it's such a shame. I, I need. I want Yasmin to be more like she was. Um, right. Finally, Gemma, what are you looking on your phone for? I was just looking because you're talking just about looking through Twitter. So, okay, right. Now we're talking about the advance payment story, which <sighs> was Monday only. Um, and so there was a bit of a drama at Prima Donna first thing in the morning because it turns out that somebody's thrown a snow globe through the window. Who could it be? I don't know. It's Ardy. It's Ardy. Oh, this wound me up. It's his um, snow globe that apparently he got from Poulton's Park and Asher recognised it. You said Chester. You said Poulton's Park. It wasn't. It was Chester Zoo. Was it? You've written Chester Zoo. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Why would they come to Poulton's Park? No, no. That's a very good point. So um, anyway. um, So, oh, no. Ardy has thrown this through Right, I don't get this. This baffled me all week because why was everyone okay with the fact... And why was Ardy... Why did Ardy, Ardy think this was a really ingenious way of getting back at his dad to throw a snow globe through a window? Ardy is not an he's ingenious not, anything. And, I think he's just a I know, but he's, surely enough. he's more mature than thinking he can just throw... And then he gets offended mm. when he gets in trouble about it. Like, it was yeah, I think divine that he is supposed to He is supposed to be a bit dumb and, and thoughtless, but I think this you're was right. Just I think even doing... Doing Pidigy. this is a. I, I don't think that he would have done this. I think he's smarter than this. But anyway, we, we get a few scenes with him and Courtney a little bit. She's in the doghouse because um, she didn't tell Ardy about Dev trying to bribe her straight away, but they soon make up from that. Hurrah. Um, no, boo. Boo. And then Asher comes around and says, I know it was you that smashed He literally the threw in. a brick through that's like belongs to R. D. Allahan. Please return. Please return. If found, please return to this is my, uh, number seven. This is my pet brick. Is yeah. my, I tell all my secrets. It's called Sunita. <laughs> um, caught uh, at the wedding later on, because uh, this is Monday, remember, Asher tells Ardy that he needs to speak to Dev because they've fallen out and he's like, oh, I don't really want to, but then he does in the end. A gay wedding says, is no time I've to not be forgiven falling you, out Dad, of your son. For this whole money thing. But, but then the police come in and they want to speak to um, Ardy about the broken door and Ardy's like, what the hell have you dobbed me into the police even yes, though you knew you this threw... was me? Turns out later it was Chesney and he needed a crime number. So, you yeah. know, he was just doing his and, civic and Dev, duty. And Dev was mad at, at him. I really enjoyed the scene in number seven later when the police officer comes round and Dev's oh, yeah. trying to worm his way out He's of it. He's trying to bribe him. Hey, man, you don't want to... Just going to drop the charges, you know? You're a dad yourself. Or I can't remember what he was saying. Well, he's but... like, oh, you could Oh, yeah, he was. The... He's saying, you can have a free kebab. See, like and this. it always works on Craig. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> not, not Craig anymore. Craig would be able to resist temptation of a free kebab. I don't think so. But... Uh, not, not those, I think not you can guys. work it into calories, Michael, if you're going to go for a run later. Mm. Anyway, the police go. He says he didn't report Hardy. As I said, it turns out that it was Chesney. Um, and Asher goes to Hardy's flat later and tells him this. And he's like, I don't care. Dev still tried to pay Courtney off to get rid of her. Still don't like him. And Asher's like, you bloody donut. Oh, no, you got me saying it. Yeah. Now. Courtney's an old slapper. Uh, Courtney's, well, Courtney's, just, Courtney's just sitting there on the sofa going, oh, thanks for being washed off. Um, and uh, Ardy sends his sister away with a flea in her ear. I, c- I, can't, I can't imagine what you would feel like if you were Dev or or Asher in the situation. Just watching Ardy 
throwing his life mm, away for mistake. this absolute bananas relationship with this really unsuitable... you could have said, like, this absolute banana of a human being or something <laughs> She's a banana. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> She's a banana with boobies. Oh, he thinks he loves her, but... Oh, she's such a... He knows that he's, you know... He knows that she's very high maintenance and she's wanted this flat when <sighs> they clearly don't have the money for it, but... Um, this story's okay. I can't believe he threw his Chester Zoo snow globe through a window when he could have sold that, got money, to get a new flat. Yeah, do you think it's like an old antique one? Well, he could get a quid for it, couldn't he? Mm. Okay, um, we have spoken too much about Coronation Street this week. That's not hope, possible. I hope you enjoyed this. We had, we had some opinions say. on things this week, which is always good. Um, I'm sure that we're going to get in trouble. No, you always think that, but we don't. I always feel bad. No, we've been good. We've given balanced you, opinions about everything apart from vapes. You've offended everybody that, that vapes. I'm sorry. I've got no problem with people who are grown-ups who vape at all. No, but if you're a child and you're vaping, stop. Sh- naughty. Mr. You Dodson know says. Naughty. You shouldn't be doing it. And if, you're, <laughs> and if you're advertising them to children as well, just don't do it. Just stop it. Mm. Stop it. Um, right, so... <laughs> Who are we giving character of the week to? The vape seller. <laughs> I think it's not going to be Dom. Not going to be Dom this week. I'm going to say gonna it's not going to be Stu. No. Um, it's Freddie. Oh. Okay. Right. Um. Oh, Billy. 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 It's Billy, isn't it? It's Billy. Standing up for what he believes in. Went I on loved his... watching him this week. I loved him at the wedding on the church. Um, went on his crusade. He he stuck his neck out. Um, yeah, it's Billy this week. Tell us what you thought of, of that, especially if it has um, special meaning to you, because I, I feel I feel like, I don't feel like I've done it justice for how important and ground, well, it's not, it shouldn't be groundbreaking to have a gay wedding in 2023, mm. but for Coronation Street, this was a significant cultural moment, wasn't it? Yeah. Long overdue. Um, I... I Interestingly, they didn't really make a big thing about, hey, look, it's our first gay wedding, and I think that's probably for the best. They probably realised they might. We knew it was, and but if Coronation Street had, I mean, maybe they were. I mean, I haven't been uh, because I I never watch when any of the actors do their interviews on TV because they usually do it before something's been on to try and encourage people to watch it. So maybe they have been saying this is the first gay wedding. Um, but they, it's not been absolutely huge, and, and that I think that's probably for the best because. But equally, it is a bit late. The ve- the venues, but where they might have promoted this is not something that, you know, like Pink News, for example. Mm. I, I, it's not something that comes across my, per, my vision mm. very much. <sighs> Score wise, there was the Stew storyline this week. <laughs> <laughs> the team what stuff a was. Okay, like I, I really love to give this one a four, but I don't know whether it is one. Well, see, right. So, so the the va- the the kids stuff. I do wonder whether I would be more interested in it if it was girls, because I, you know, we've spoken before about how you naturally have more of an affinity to people that are like you, and so these teenage boys. I mean, I never knew any teenage boys. Well, I I've said this before on the show. I was went to a girls school I didn't really know any boys till I went to college I don't have any real I never don't really ever think I've spoken to a teenage boy for any length of time (laughs) so to me I I don't really uh, find them interesting or uh what's the word I don't have any yeah, not engaging to infinity watch, to yeah. them so infinity affinity <laughs> um if it was all girls or a mixture, I might find it diff- more engaging. It's just the I fact guess, that it's, there's a mean bully storyline. It feels a little bit of a well-trodden road. But here. I will we say... we a new Corey Brent already. I don't think it is that common on Corey to have just a boy's story. Just a teen boys. I think it's more... No. They, they do focus more well, on recently girls. it has been more of the girls, yeah. hasn't it? With Summer and Asher But, you know, if we, and... we, we just recently did Candy Stowe as a character profile and... She, the the story is very fo- focused that it was to her Jason Todd and Candice and Sarah mm. and so that was more of a mixture then wasn't it but I just feel like they were focused more on Sarah and Candice in that era um the the Stephen storyline this week I'd li- I'd like to have liked more but there were a few too many jumps to conclusions it and felt massive like coincidences acceleration time um, it was always great to see Jenny and I love to see Jenny happy I think, I think as, it's as happen. great as the wedding 
and the fallout of the wedding was, I think I'm going to go back to my old reliable. And I, I need, I, can you just do a really bad week Coronation Street so I'm not going to get scoring at three out and a half out of five again? Give yeah, me a, three and give a half, me a, Give me a three week, Corrie. Give me a two not week. To, not next week. It's just, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's okay, it's but fine. I just need more to just get it into that fourth category. Next week, I'm really, really hoping that this is not going to be a three and a half week. So I am giving it, mm. um, I'm giving it three and a half tea mules out of five, which is oh, Jenny yeah. in Thailand with her Jenny tea in bags so sewn really. into her coat. Oh dear. What about you? Well, see, we really, really enjoyed the Billy storyline. Um, but like you said, it really got let down this week by Stu. And that... But that, that wasn't a huge no, part of it, but was it? I can't... I wanted to give it a four. Hang on a minute. Did we talk about the Cassie storyline? I don't remember. Did we just skip over Cassie? Have I actually got notes for Cassie? Have I accidentally <laughs> pasted over Do, them? I think Did we put them all together with the... Vape... Papa Dom. Oh no. Cassie come home. Oh, we did. I know we did talk about that. Did we? Did we? Uh, no, we did. Nothing we said really September happened. the 11th. Didn't we? Yeah, but Nothing that... happened. We did no, mention it because we happened. talked about her sitting on the bench. Oh no, no, we no, we didn't because we didn't talk about Abby coming home and being fine with when with um oh. Cassie staying over there and well, being surprisingly reasonable. That happened. That happened. We've mentioned it. We've, now. we've said enough. Sorry, I don't know how we skip that. Gemma probably scrolled down. It's probably my fault. Yeah. Um, I give this. If it was, if we didn't have, if we didn't have um, certain stories, then this would have definitely been four, four and a half. But it is three and a half. Little family brouhaha's, <laughs> which was great from Dev. And I, the character of the week is Billy. Yes. <laughs>